Hello and good evening to all. Uh, Chaitali this side, your host for this webinar. Uh, guys, please note we are waiting for more participants to get in. As I can see, the participants are still joining the live, so we'll wait for them. We'll start the webinar in few minutes. Thanks for your patience, guys. Thank you. Uh, participants are requested to note that we are waiting for more participants to join in. As the participants are still joining in, we'll wait for them and we'll go ahead with the webinar soon. Also, please note that we are sharing all the official links and details in the q a section. If you want, uh, you can go through that. You can follow us on our social media platforms as well. 
to get the relevant updates on the upcoming uh, webinars, workshop, trainings, which we do. Uh, let's get started. Hello and welcome you all uh, in this AI Gen AI training on introduction to artificial intelligence. Chaitali this side, your host for this webinar. Uh, please note we are into day one of the Gen AI series. Also, me and my team uh, are there to guide you all through this webinar. If you have any doubt, questions, or queries, me, my team and also the speaker will be there. You can drop your questions, queries in the Q&A section. Then topic uh, talking about our today's event uh, sponsor, Synergetics. So Synergetics is India's one of a kind corporate learning solution company. Synergetics uh, do believe in delivering the trainings to solve the customer pain points by crafting the cut edge learning solutions. The solutions on which we do provide trainings are persona based onboarding. Then we have onboarding add on. Certification solution, then we have certification add on solution. Reskilling solution. Uh, emerging technology training solution. Then we have certification hackathon solution. Cloud adoption solution. Latest tra training solution. Then sales pre-sales training solution. 
practice playbook solution and architecting solution. Then how our training will help you? Uh, it will give a complete learning experience. You will get trained, build confidence to appear for the exam and get certified. That is get recognized. The delivery method. We have three different types of delivery method, which is uh, guided self learning. In which synergetics do provide exam prep sessions, online training material. Then we have blended learning in which we do provide mentoring sessions. Online learning material. And the third. Type of the delivery methodology is instructor led learning in which our instructor will guide you to get the. Certified uh, to get certified in the. Courses. Also to know more about it, you can connect with us. The details will be provided to you all in the chat window. Then here you can see the benefits of getting certified. Benefits to uh, your organization. You will shift from unstructured learning to structured learning. Then building a competitive advantages adding profit to your business and enhancing brand reputation. Then how you can advance yourself. So this is the skilling journey of the Microsoft certification. The first step of the certification uh, is fundamental certifications. Then we have advanced role base and expert level certifications. In fundamental certification, we have AZ 900 that is Azure fundamental, AI 900 Azure AI fundamental, DP 900 which is Azure data fundamental, then PL 900 power platform fundamental and SC 900 uh, security compliance and identity fundamental. Then Synergetics do provide the training on role based certifications like AZ104, AZ204, AI102, DP203. Then we have PL series and SC series as well. And in expert level training, we do, we do provide training on AZ305, SC100. PL 600 and AZ 400. Again, those who are interested uh, to get certified in any of this certification, do connect with us. Details are there in the chat box. Then the certification offerings. So certification will help you to increase your visibility, expand your knowledge and skill. Uh, we provide certification add on onboarding add on like short duration modules and more. Then the training is organized and handled by ATC community. So ATC community is open to all the people who are interested in cloud technologies and various emerging technologies uh, like artificial intelligence. Machine learning, open source, IoT, cloud, and DevOps. Under this community, we have different communities like emerging technology community for all. Then we have Azure Tech Community Pune for Pune curse. Then we have emerging technology community Surat and Azure Tech Community Nagpur for Nagpur curse. Uh, you just have to install the meetup app on your phone to follow these communities. The links for these communities will be provided to you all in the chat box. 
Also, these uh, communities do provide information about the upcoming events, webinars, workshop, which we do. So make sure you go and follow us on our communities. Then you have to follow the code of conduct, which will create a respectful environment uh, for all the participants. Uh, please note, participants are not allowed to take the screenshot of the presentation and cannot do the screen recording uh, while uh, speaker is sharing his or her screen. Also note the achievement batch will be shared with you all for the content and the study material which will cover under this uh, training. So you will get the content and the study material for this webinar as well. Then we have Mr. Smeet Shah with us today. He is an MCT Microsoft certified trainer and currently works with Synergetics as trainer consultant. Uh, he has five plus years of experience in delivering the training on technologies like artificial intelligence, machine learning and more. Agenda of this webinar, what all topics and concepts will be covered under this webinar? We'll talk more about the basic of artificial intelligence applications of AI in various industries and impact of AI on society and businesses. Then this is the interesting part of the webinar. You can say, please note, uh, we are providing a complimentary learning achievement badge for this course that is AI 900 which includes study material like an overview of the modules and the topics which are related to this webinar. Also, you can share this badge, this achievement on your LinkedIn profile as well as on Twitter and other profiles. To get this badge, you have to follow certain steps and get the badge activated. Uh, we will share the badge details steps in the chat window soon. Also, meanwhile, in the break time, whenever we take the break, I will explain you all how to get this batch activated and share it on your LinkedIn and other profiles. So make sure you stay tuned with us for this batch and get your batch activated to get the study material related to AI 900. Then we have three more topics in Gen AI. As you can see on the screen, the date and the topic has been mentioned. We'll share the details and the registration link in the chat box. If you are interested and you are yet to register yourself for this topic, please go and register now. Also, don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms to get the relevant updates and uh, to know more about the upcoming webinars, workshop training with Synergetics do. Links uh, for all the social media platform will be mentioned in your chat box. So don't forget to follow us on our social media platforms as well. Then thank you all for leading me your ears. Now without a further ado, uh, passing the mic to our speaker, Mr. Smith so he can captivate you with his expertise and insights. Thank you all. Thank you, Chaitali. And good evening, everyone, and welcome to today's session on artificial intelligence. As Chaitali mentioned, my name is Mitch Shah, and I will be your mentor for today's session. I'm a Microsoft certified trainer, and I have more than five years of experience in teaching various AI related technologies like machine learning and deep learning. So without further ado, let's go ahead and let's start our session for today. So what I will do is I will just share my screen. I hope my screen is visible. Just let me know in the chat if it's visible or not. Is it visible? Chaitali, can you confirm? 
Yes, yes, we can see. Yes. Okay, fine. So you can see the Azure portal now. Yes, yes, that screen is visible. Okay, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead, guys, and let's start our session for today. So, guys, today we are going to learn about what is artificial intelligence and how you can use Azure for your artificial intelligence related needs. So, let's go ahead, guys. So, let's understand what is artificial intelligence, or in other words, what is AI? So, guys, AI is nothing but a set of tools. AI is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes. So the first purpose is to get inference from the data or I should say insights from the data. And the second purpose is to get prediction from the data. So I repeat what is AI or what is artificial intelligence? Artificial intelligence is nothing but a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from data. Second is to get predictions from data. Now, what do I mean by inference? So, for example, let's assume that we have da uh, data of a popular retail store called DMART. Now, looking at that data, I'm coming to know that customers are going into that store. Uh, in evening time, uh, so more customers are going into uh, the store at evening time as compared to in the morning time. So I'm coming at that inference, looking at that data. Because of that inference, I can then let my manager know or I can let my team lead know that, OK, boss, it seems that people are going into the store more at evening time, so we should be better prepared at evening time. Right, so you can arrive at many such inferences from your data. So that is one use case of AI. So AI is a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First purpose is to get inferences from the data. Second purpose is to get prediction from the data. So for example, let's say I have weather data of past 20 years and looking at how it has rained in the past 20 years, I want to predict how it will rain in the upcoming year. So that is prediction. So as I mentioned, AI is a set of tools that is used for two purposes. First is to get inferences from the data. Second is to get predictions from data. Now the field of AI is divided into two technologies. So what are the tools or what are the technologies that you can use in the field of AI? So what are the tools or what are the technologies that you can use in the field of AI? So there are two tools or there are two technologies that you can use. First is machine learning. Second is deep learning. Now, what is the difference between machine learning and deep learning? So let's go ahead and let's understand it. So guys, we'll try to understand it in a very simple manner over here. So guys, if I talk about machine learning, so it's like teaching a computer how to recognize patterns, and make decisions based on past examples. I will mention it over here. So it's like teaching a computer how to recognize patterns and make decisions based on past examples. So imagine teaching a child to differentiate between cats and dogs by showing them lots of pictures of each. So the child then learns the general characteristics of cats and dogs and uses this knowledge to identify new pictures. So that is about machine learning. Now, how is it different as compared to deep learning? Let's go ahead. So guys, deep learning, is another tool of AI or another technology of AI where we use something called neural networks. Okay, so we can say it's an advanced tool of AI. It's a advanced tool of AI wherein we use something called neural networks. So neural networks, guys, are basically designed 
to mimic the way how a human brain works okay so it's like not only teaching the child how to differentiate between cats and dogs but also helping them understand these subtle differences like the breed of the dog or the color of the dog or the color of the cat without specifically teaching them about these details so deep learning systems can learn from massive amount of data and can pick up on complex patterns that might not be immediately obvious so deep learning has that capability to pick up on complex patterns that are not immediately obvious whereas machine learning does not have that capability okay so guys this is the overview of what ai is so just to recap we have tried to understand what is ai or what is artificial intelligence so artificial intelligence is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes first is to get inferences from the data second is to get predictions from data now how do we do that what are the tools and technologies to achieve that well there are mainly two tools or two technologies within ai to achieve the same first is machine learning second is deep learning and we try to have a overview of both machine learning and deep learning fine so now that we have a overview of what ai is let's go ahead and let's see how you can take help of azure cloud platform to fulfill your ai needs so guys azure cloud platform offers many services related to ai okay so azure cloud platform offers many services related to ai so those services can be put into four categories guys okay first is the speech service second is the language service then third service is the document intelligence service and does anybody remember about the fourth service guys what could be the fourth service first is speech service second language service third document intelligence what about the fourth can anyone point out the fourth so one student has mentioned in the chat over here vision service right so vision service so these are the four services or these are the four category of services that azure cloud platform offers so first category is speech services category second is language services category third is document intelligence services category and fourth is vision services category fine so let's go ahead guys and let's start with our first service of today which is speech service then we'll move on to the other services also so guys today our goal is to have a overview of each ai service that azure offers so we'll try to have a theoretical understanding as well as a practical understanding of each of these services okay and in the upcoming sessions of our ai series uh, you will observe that we'll dive deeper into each of these services today we will just have a overview of the same okay fine so as i mentioned the azure cloud platform offers ai services those ai services can be put into four main categories first is speech services category second is language services category third is document intelligence services category and fourth is vision services category so let's start with our first category which is speech services category all right so let's go ahead so what is the thing that we will do over here guys so what we'll be doing is using the speech services category we'll try to implement a speech translator now there are many things that you can do on the azure cloud platform but today what we'll be doing is using the speech services category we'll try to implement a speech translator so i will speak something to my uh, laptop or to my computer my computer will understand it and it will convert it to any other language of my choice for example if i want to convert english speech to hindi speech it can do that if i want to convert let's say english speech to spanish speech it can do that okay so we'll try to implement that so let's go ahead and let's see how you can implement the same using azure cloud platform 
So guys, the first step is to visit the Azure Cloud Platform. So let's do that over here. So I'll just go ahead, visit the Azure Cloud Platform. And the first thing that you have to do over here is you need to search for something called Azure AI Services. OK, so go to the search bar, search for Azure AI Services. Here it is. I'll click on it. And now it will ask me which service do I want to create? So what I want to do is I want to create a service which is speech service, right? So over here you can see on the left hand side there is an option to create it. Let me click on it. And here there is a create button to create a speech service. So I'll go ahead and click on the create button over here. Let me click on it. And then over here I have a form that you can see on the screen. Now I just have to fill the form over here. First it will ask me for a subscription. So over here I'll choose my Azure subscription. Second, it will ask me for a resource group. Let me create a new resource group. If you guys are familiar with the Azure Cloud platform, you would know that if we want to use any service on Azure, it has to be consumed as a resource. And every resource that we create in Azure has to be present inside some or the other resource group, right? So let me go ahead. Let me create a new resource group. Here I will create a new resource group called AI Webinar. OK, then it will ask me to select a region where I want my resource to lie. I feel East US is fine. After that, the name of my resource. So over here, I will just give some random name over here. Let me call it speech. Translator. Now remember that the name that you mentioned has to be unique across the entire Azure AI platform. So for example, if I have written a name over here, this name should not have been used by anyone else in the world while creating this speech services resource. OK, so it seems over here that I have got a tick mark which indicates that this is a unique name, so that is good. Fine, then it asks me for a pricing tier. Let me select the pricing tier over here. Fine, and after filling the form, I'll just go ahead and create this speech services resource. And we'll see how using the speech services resource, we can go ahead and implement our speech translator uh, lab that we want to perform. So let's go ahead. And now it asks me to review the details. If I'm fine with the details, I can just go ahead and create the speech services resource. I'm fine with the details. So now I have clicked on the create button and it will create the speech services resource for me. Fine. So guys, our first step was to create a speech services resource. And now let's move on to our second step. So what I will do is I will open up Visual Studio Code. And inside Visual Studio Code, I'll be writing down some Python code that will help me to do my task. What is my task? My task is to implement a speech translator that will that can translate any speech of one language to another language. For example, if I say something in English to my computer, I want it to be translated into Spanish or Hindi. OK, something like that. Fine. So let's go ahead and over here. Uh, I've already created some folders. OK, so let me go ahead and let me go into one such folder. Fine, so guys inside this folder over here, what I will do is I'll create a Python file. Let me create a file called. Speech translator dot py. And before we write any code guys, there is one library that we need to install and the name of that library is Azure Cognitive Services Speech. So let me go ahead and let me install that library over here. I'll just go ahead and install that library. I repeat the name of the library is Azure Cognitive Services Speech. And I want a specific version of that library to be installed because I suspect that the recent version might be unstable. So I want to install a stable version. So let me install this version called 1.30.0.
and it will install the library for me. For me, it gives me a message saying that I've already installed it previously. But for you guys, if you have not installed it previously, that installation process will be started for you. Fine, but in my case, I've already installed, so it won't install it for me again. It just gives me a message saying that installation has already been done. OK, fine. Let's go ahead, guys, and let's start our code. So I repeat, what is our task to implement us? Speech translator project, right? So I want to use Azure platform to convert my speech of one language to speech of another language. So let's go ahead and let's see how we can do that over here. OK, so we'll be seeing how to do this. So let's start with our first line of code. Here, what I am going to do is I'm going to import the Azure Cognitive Services speech SDK. So let me go ahead and do that. Now, a prerequisite for this webinar is that you should have a basic understanding of Python programming language so that you can understand the code better. OK, but if you do not have understanding, don't worry. Uh, maybe the syntax of the programming language won't be understood by you, but the flow of programming will at least make sense. OK, fine. So let's go ahead and let me import the Azure Cognitive Services speech SDK over here. Fine, and I have done that. Now let's go ahead and the second thing that I will do over here is in order to connect with the speech services resource that I created on the Azure portal, I will need two things, guys. OK, and what are those two things? First, I will need the key of that resource. And second, I will need the region in which that resource was created. I repeat, in order to connect with the speech services resource that I created on the Azure portal, I will need two things. And what are those two things? First is the key of that speech services resource. OK, and you can get the key from this keys and endpoint section. So this is the key that I want. Here there are two keys. You can use any one of them. So that is one thing that I need keys. So I need a key for my speech services resource. Second, I need the region in which that resource was created. So in my scenario, it was created in East US. All right, so these are the two things that I need. So let me go ahead and let me save these two values in a variable because I'll be using it going forward. So let me store these values in a variable. So first I will store the key value. OK, let me copy and paste it in my code. And second, I'll be needing the region value. So let me copy the same and paste it in my code over here. OK, here we go. Fine, so I repeat again, guys, in order to connect with the speech services resource that I created earlier, I needed two things and I have saved those two things over here in a variable so that I can use them forward in my code. OK, fine. Now what I will do is I will initialize the speech translation configuration. So let me do that over here. So in my code, I will initialize the speech translation configuration. So let me initialize the same. I will make sure that there are no spelling mistakes in my code. So let me implement it fully. What I am doing, guys, over here, I am just initializing the speech translation configuration. And in order to initialize it, I will need two things. First is the key value that I had stored. Second is the region value that I had stored. So let me pass those key value, key value and region values over here. Fine. With this, what I have done, I have initialized the speech translation configuration using the provided API key and region. OK, fine. Then. What is my task? Uh, just to repeat it for uh, the students. What is my task over here? My task is to convert. Any speech that I'm giving to my machine, let's say I'll be giving a speech in English and I want to convert it to, let's say Hindi. 
Okay, so the input that I will be giving will be in English, right? So I will tell that to my machine that the input speech will be in English. Okay, so let me go ahead and let me mention that over here. That the input speech will be in English. So over here, I'll just go ahead, mention the code for the same. I'm just mentioning over here that my input speech is in English. And there are various versions of English language, right? For example, in US, English is spoken differently. In UK, it is spoken differently. So we will uh, tell to our machine that I'll be speaking in a, a sort of US accent. OK, so I'll tell that to my machine over here. Fine. So over here, I'm just communicating to my machine that I'll be uh, the input speech that I'll be giving to my machine will be in English language. Now, what will be the output speech? So I want to give that option to the user. OK, so I'm thinking I should give three options. First is French, second uh, uh, Spanish, third Hindi. OK, so over here I'll just go ahead and tell that to my machine that the user can expect output in any of the three languages. It can expect output in French language. It can expect output in Spanish language. It can expect output in Hindi language. So let me go ahead and let me mention the same over here. So I will say that the output can be one of the three languages. It can either be uh, the user can expect the output in French language or it can expect the output in uh, Spanish language or it can expect the output in Hindi language. Oh, OK, fine. So I have done that. Now what I need to do is I need to uh, I should say configure the speech service using the same uh, key and region values that I had stored earlier. Fine. So let's go ahead and do that. So let me configure the speech service. I'm doing this so that uh, my machine is able to take a voice input from me. OK, so let me go ahead and do that. So let me go ahead and do the same. This code I'm writing so my machine is able to take voice input from me. OK, the previous configuration we had done was to basically uh, connect to the speech services resource on Azure. OK, uh, whereas this configuration we are doing is to basically send our input to that speech services resource that we created on Azure. OK, fine. And what I'll be doing over here is let me go ahead and uh, let me obtain or I should say let me just get input from the user. OK, so uh, I want to get input from the user. I want the user to let me know what is the target language. OK. So for now, I will just keep tar target language as empty. So let me go ahead and do that. I'll just say that target language is an empty string from now uh, for now. Although later what I want to do is I want to get value in this variable from the user. OK, fine. So. Let me go ahead and let me complete my code over here. So I will say that while target language. is not equal to quit. OK, so unless and until the user wants to quit, you keep asking what the user wants to translate. OK, whether he wants to translate to Hindi language or French language or Spanish language, you keep on asking it. So where I'm using a while loop for the same that unless and until the user wants to keep uh, wants to quit, keep on asking um, uh, what in which language the user wants to convert his speech. OK. Fine, and let me get the target language value from the user. So I will ask an input from the user. I will say that enter a target language. Okay, I will say enter a target language, and let me make sure that this 
input that is shown to the user is shown in a prettier way. So I'll just do some changes in my code. I will tell the user that you should enter fr for French. Then I will tell my user to enter es for Spanish. After that, I will tell the user to enter hi for Hindi. Okay, hi for Hindi. And uh, if the user does not want to do uh, want to do any speech translation, then I will just send a message to the user that enter anything else to stop. Fine. And just to make sure that by mistake user does not put anything in uppercase because uh, any value that is given over here, it will be sent to the Azure portal, right? And uh, that speech services resource that we created on Azure portal expects that language value to be in lowercase. So I will deliberately make it lowercase over here. Fine, so let's go ahead. And after getting the target language value from the user, uh, I will just go ahead and uh, ask my machine to use my default microphone so that I can send the input speech. So let me ask my machine for the same. OK, I'll ask my machine to take my input speech over here. So let me go ahead and do it. So let me go ahead and do it over here. OK, uh, just give me uh, 10 seconds guys. I guess there is a delivery guy that has come in. OK, so just give me 10 seconds. I'll just be on mute and I'll just come back in 10 seconds. OK. OK, sorry for the pause, guys. So a delivery guide come in to my doorstep. Fine. So now let's go ahead, guys, and let's complete writing our code. So now what I want to do now in this line that I'm writing in this coding line, what I'm doing, I'm telling my machine that, OK, please use my default microphone for my input text. So I will say use default microphone. Equal to true. OK, fine. And once my uh, machine has taken, uh, has understood that, OK, we need to take the default microphone. What I'll be doing is this configuration value. Let me store it in a variable. And that configuration value, I'll be using it ahead. Fine. In this configuration, what I've mentioned that please use my default microphone for the input speech. All right, let's go ahead. And now let's complete writing our code. Now what I will do is those configuration values, I will just go ahead and I will pass it to the Azure portal. And in the Azure portal, our speech services resources waiting for these values to uh, take in, right? So I'll just pass those values onto the Azure portal. Fine, so in this line of code, I'll just go ahead and do the same. Let me go ahead. Let me complete writing my code over here. 
I'll just go ahead and I'll complete writing my code. So all the configuration values that we had uh, written earlier, those configuration values I'll just pass. So uh, previously we had uh, created this uh, translation config, right? So that value I'll just go ahead and uh, in fact, I had not created that variable earlier. My mistake. OK, so this translation co configuration, right? Then our audio configuration. So those configuration values, I'll just pass it to my Azure portal. And in the Azure portal, we have a speech services resource waiting to take these values in. Fine, so let me just go ahead. Let me just pass these values over here to the Azure portal. OK, I'll just go ahead and do that. Just to make sure that the second configuration that I have given audio configuration is going to the right parameter. Let me mention the parameter name also. OK, fine. Then I will give a prompt to the user that OK, all the configuration values have been sent. And now uh, please speak. OK, so I will say speak now. Once the uh, user is speaking, I will just get that audio from the user. So let me go ahead and let me get that audio that he speaks in one go. OK, if at all there is a pause, uh, then uh, our machine will stop taking voice. OK, so I want my machine to uh, take the speech input in one go. So whatever a user tells in one go, all of that voice it will take in. OK, so it will it will get all that speech input. OK, it will get all that speech input. And it will pass it to the Azure portal and uh, the Azure portal. Will give us a result back. And it will give us a result in that result. It will also tell us that what it has understood from that speech input. OK, so if in that speech input I have mentioned two words or let's say uh, four words. Hi, how are you? So it will uh, Azure portal will give a result to us and it will confirm in the result that OK, I have uh, got these four words from the input. OK, so just for our confirmation, let me check. If the Azure portal has understood correctly from the voice input or not. OK, so I'll go ahead and do it. So over here I'll just print to the user that OK, I am translating. Uh, I am translating over here. Okay, let me just go ahead and make sure that the spelling is correct. I'm translating. Uh, what I'm translating, uh, let me mention it to the user. So I will just tell the user that I'm translating the text that Azure portal has understood. So the Azure portal will take the speech input. It will try to convert it to some text. So that text I want to show to the user that it, it is it the correct text. OK, and once it has done that. OK, uh, what I will do is um, I will also show the translation to the user. So let me go ahead and let me show the translation as well. OK, so after showing the. Uh, text that Azure platform is uh, understanding from my input speech, then I also want to show to the user that OK in the output speech. What how is the result like? OK, so let me go ahead and let me mention the same. I'll go ahead. I'll mention the same over here. So let me mention it to my user that OK, this is the translation that I have obtained. OK. Fine, and let me go ahead and let me implement it and let's see if it works or not. OK, so what I will do is I'll just go ahead and I will try to save this. 
and over here there are some coding related errors so i will just go ahead and i will solve the same okay let me just make sure that the input that i have obtained uh, that input i will store it in this variable over here and are there any other spelling mistakes if there are let me go ahead and let me correct the same it seems over here uh, this is fine uh, i'll just go ahead and okay fine and just to make sure that the while loop ends at some time i'll do one thing over here up till now what we have done we have uh, given a configuration to our machine that okay i'll be whatever what are whatever i'll be speaking uh, uh i will i will speak from my default microphone okay then those configuration values i'm passing to the azure portal then i'm then mentioning to the user that okay you are now allowed to speak so please speak and then whatever user will speak in one go that speech i'm sending to the azure portal then the azure portal will understand the speech it will internally translate it to text so that text also i'm showing to the user then that text it will convert to another language okay so uh that translation also let me show and then that translated text i will have to convert it back to speech right so let me go ahead and let me do that over here so i will just say that that translated text i want to convert it to speech now depending upon the target language whether it is french language or whether it is spanish language or whether it is hindi language i want my output voice to be different right so over here let me go ahead and let let me mention the voices so i will just mention that if the user wants the output voice to be in french language then use this particular voice over here okay i'll just mention the code for that voice now all of these uh, details are present in the microsoft official documentation so you can get it from there for now i'm just mentioning uh, uh, the voice codes over here so if the user wants the output language to be of french then i want the voice uh, to be of henry neural okay if the user wants the output speech to be of different language let's say spanish language then i want the voice to be different in that case i want the voice to be different now these voice codes as i mentioned you can get it from the microsoft's official documentation okay so i'll just go ahead and complete the code in 5 minutes and then i'll be taking your doubts so we are just to repeat what i am doing depending upon the language that the user wants in the output speech i am making sure that the voice is different okay so let me go ahead and do that okay fine and now i will say that depending upon the target language if the target language is of french or spanish or hindi you know get that particular voice so i will just go ahead and get that particular voice over here let me go ahead and let me get the same i'll get that particular voice and a short while i'll be done okay fine then uh, i want to make sure that the azure portal also generates that output voice for me so i will go ahead and write the code for that as well so i want my azure portal to generate that output voice for me so let me go ahead and do the same so over here i want the azure portal to generate that output voice and soon i'll be done with my code 
okay fine that output voice i want to get in my machine so let me go ahead and let me write the code for that so that output voice that is generated in the azure portal i want to get in my machine so let me go ahead and write the code for that so i'll say that output voice i want to get okay fine and i will say that if uh, in this scenario at the end i will just say target language equal to quit okay so once this target language variable takes this value then the loop won't run again for now i want the loop to run once then later i will do the configuration in such a way that the user decides when to end the loop but fine for now i want to end the loop uh, in uh, in just one iteration fine and let me just go ahead let me make sure that all the errors have been solved out so there are certain spelling mistakes i'll just go ahead and i will just correct the same over here so let me check from start so one spelling mistake i have corrected is there any other spelling mistake that i can see uh let me check let me check what are the problems okay so it says that there is a syntax issue okay so over here i have missed uh uh, syntax so uh, i've missed following the syntax so yeah, let me just go ahead and do that here i'm just thinking should i change this code a bit although it's fine okay fine now let's go ahead guys and what we'll be doing is we'll be executing this code so let me go ahead let me execute this code if at all there is an error that we encounter that we'll try to solve that error fine so let's see so what i am doing i want to I, I will basically give a speech to my machine my machine will send it to azure platform azure platform will then translate that speech to some other language and that azure uh, and, and that speech that azure platform generates it will send it back to my machine so i can hear it okay so let me go ahead let me execute this code over here i'll go ahead execute the code and it is ask, asking me the target language let me mention hindi okay so i will speak something and it will then convert it to hindi fine so let me go ahead and do that i'll say hi for hindi and i will now try to speak something okay it says translator not defined okay let me check uh, what is the issue over here in line 22 translator not defined uh, oh sorry so this configuration i have not stored in a variable my mistake let me execute the code again my name is smith and over here i gave a speech to my machine and it gave a error it said target language okay it seems there is a spelling mistake over here in my variable i'll just go ahead and i will correct it so let me correct that spelling mistake and i will start again my name is smith okay so i gave this speech to my machine and there is another error over here it says speech config not defined okay have we missed have i missed a uh, mentioning a variable okay it says in line 33 let me go over there okay line 33 first of all there is a spelling mistake over here and speech config uh variable should be defined in our code is it not defined yeah sorry i missed defining it fine so let me go ahead and let me define the same over here so i'll go outside my loop define it
I will just go ahead, complete writing my code. And there are certain spelling mistakes I'm doing, so I'll just go ahead and I will correct it. And fine. Let me go ahead, execute the code again. Again, it is asking me what is the target language. I'll say Hindi. My name is Smith. So I have given this text to the user and uh, it has given me a response in Hindi, but I was not able to hear it. Let me increase my voice. Why was I not able to hear? Uh, why was I not able to hear? Let me increase. Hello, how are you? So I have given it a speech. It has also translated it in Hindi language, but I was not able to hear it, right? So the issue over here that I'm getting is I'm not able to hear. Okay, fine. In this scenario, uh, let me go through my code from start. Have I missed anything? Wherever I'm getting it. Now I want to play the same. If I want to play the same. I think. Uh, OK. Let me do one more thing over here. I have obtained the speech. Let me save it in a variable. And mm -hmm. now I should be able to. Uh, OK, let me try to do something else. OK, still it is not quitting, so it seems this is an issue over here. OK, so I'll just go ahead, enter the code to solve this issue. So let me go ahead and let me do that. So I'll put a if condition over here. Let me put a if condition. I will say if target language is not within the values that is specified. For example, previously I entered four letter word quit. Even then it was asking me to speak now. So what, what I want to tell to my machine if the target language that I've mentioned is not within these values, okay, then just don't go ahead. So where I'll put a if condition, if it is not within the values, don't go ahead. Okay, if it is not within the values, don't go ahead. Love this code will be now within the if block. And if it is not within the values, I will just say target language equal to quit. OK, and if it is equal to quit, then what will happen is this that in the new iteration, the while loop will not execute that. OK, fine. Let's go ahead. I have made this correction. Now let's see. Now at least if I'll enter something as let's say something like KL. Now KL is not within what uh, not within these three values that I've specified to my machine, right? So it should stop the loop over here. Yes, and it does stop the loop. Fine, but our goal over here was to get the speech. So if I'm not getting the speech, I want to get the reason why. So I'll say if speak dot reason is not equal to this code, then I want to print the reason. Okay, I'll say synthesizing. Oh, 
want to print it. Speak. Dot reason. OK, fine. Let's go ahead and let's execute the code. I will say that I want the target language to be Hindi. My name is Smith. So I've given this input and it said OK speech. Uh, spelling mistake. OK, let's correct it. My name is Smith. OK. Uh, it seems it is still not speaking, right? OK, any error that? I, yes, there is an issue in the code. So the audio, the voice that I want from my machine that has a certain code, right? So instead of underscore, I should put hyphen. OK, so there is an issue with the code. Fine. Fine, I'll just tell it to stop. Run the code again and now it should work. My name is Smith. OK, first of all, I'll have to tell that I want the target language to be Hindi, right? Fine, so let me do that. I'll just tell to my machine that my target language is Hindi. My name is Smith. OK, and now uh, you can hear uh, the output voice also, right? So the only issue was in our voice code. OK, so for Hindi, I had written an incorrect voice code earlier. Fine, so issue was in that. But you can see we, are, we have completed our first task of today, which is to implement a speech translator uh, uh, project, right? So I spoke something to my machine. And my machine then uh, converted it to another language. Similarly, if I wanted to convert it to Spanish language, I can do that. So for that, I'll give it a code. I'll say yes. My name is Smith. And now you can see it has converted it to Spanish over here. Fine. I will try it once again because I believe you might have not been able to hear the output because my earphones were plugged in. So I'll unplug my earphone so you can uh, hear it on speaker. OK, let me try it again. My name is Smith. And now I believe you can hear the output. I just unplugged my earphone. So. Fine, so you, you could you would you would have been able to hear the output on speaker. OK, fine, so you can try this code guys and uh, this code will work for you. OK, I'll make sure to. Uh, pass this code to you. OK, now let me take some doubts. So any issue in our first task days, I was not able to take doubts in mid. Let me go ahead. Let me open the chat and let me see if there are any doubts over here. Is Uh, now is your doubt clear? You had mentioned that I had uh, written that word quit. Still, uh, the loop didn't end, end right. So now is your doubt clear? I have made that correction in my code. I hope it is clear. If not, let. Okay. Once two answers could not hear the output, is it so? Uh, is there any person who was able to hear? Because over here my speakers are a bit. Uh, uh, you can say they are not that loud. I hope at least some of them were able to hear. The translation, right? Yes, yes. At least some of them were able to hear. I hope. OK, but uh, if you are not able to hear, at least try this code. I'm, I'll provide it in the chat for you. OK, and you can try this code and it will definitely work. So two things you have to do guys. First, create a speech services resource 
on the Azure portal. And second, uh, in order to use that speech services resource, we have to write this code over here. OK, so just try uh, just uh, take this code as it is and uh, you can implement it. However, make sure that the key that you mention is different because the resource that you will create in your Azure portal will have a different key. I have a different key. OK, you will have a different key, so make sure to change the key. Rest of the code, keep it the same. OK, and you will see that our code will work. Fine, so guys, this was our first task of today, right? Which was to implement a speech translator uh, project. Now let's move on to our next task. OK, so now what we'll be doing, guys, is we'll be trying to use another category of service that Azure offers. OK, with respect to AI, which is language category service. So we have already uh, we already had an overview of speech category service. Now we want to implement language category service. OK, fine. So let's go ahead. Let's do that over here. So what I'll be doing is I'll be going to the home page of. The Azure portal and uh, now I want to deal with. Uh, language services category. OK, previously we worked with speech services category. And now what we want to do is we want to implement language services category. Fine, so let's go ahead and let's try to implement the same. And here what I'll be doing is uh, I'll be implementing two projects over here. In the first project, we'll be trying to analyze some reviews that are given. OK, let's say I'm managing a hotel, so there are some reviews that people have given online. OK, so I'll be trying to analyze those reviews. That is one thing that I'll be doing. Second thing that I'll be doing is I'll be trying to convert. Those reviews which are not in English. OK, so those non English reviews, I will convert it to English language. So two things I'll be doing two tasks I'll be doing with respect to. Language services category. First, I'll be trying to analyze text. Second, I'll be trying to translate text. OK, so first let's go ahead guys and let's try to analyze this uh, test. Uh, sorry, analyze text. So in order to analyze tech uh, test, uh, what do we have to do? Let's try to understand. So what you have to do is go to the home page of your Azure portal and try to search for Azure AI services. Try to search for Azure AI services. Here it is. OK, so I'll click on it. And on the left hand side, now there is an option to work with language uh, services category, right? So I'll just go ahead and click on that. So let me create a resource of this category so that I can use it. So there is a from uh, there is a form that is prompted to us. Let me go ahead and let me fill in that form. Okay, so all the details I'll just go ahead and fill in. Let me fill in. And here we go. OK, it seems some values are missing. I have not entered something. OK, so as I mentioned guys previously also while creating a speech services resource that the name of that resource has to be unique across or Azure, right? Uh, similarly here also you can see it is saying that this name that I've mentioned for this resource for this language services resource is not unique. So let me make sure it is unique. So I'll do some changes. OK, fine. Now it seems this name has not take has, has not been taken by anyone, so I can go ahead and proceed. All right, and now what I have done is I have created a language services resource. Now that I have created it, I can work with it in Visual Studio Code. Fine, so let me go ahead and do that. So here guys, there are some reviews as you can see. So let's assume that we are managing a hotel and there are some reviews that have been given or let's say you are managing a, a company like Make My Trip. 
okay and there are some reviews given on your platform and you want to analyze those reviews okay so you can see here are some reviews that are given so i have uh, saved five reviews out of the five reviews i believe four reviews are in english language whereas the fifth and the last review is not in english language but fine I, what i want to do is i want to analyze all the reviews irrespective of their language whether they are written in english language or not written in english language fine so let's go ahead and let's work with it guys so what i will be doing is i will be creating a new file over here uh, let me call it analyze text.py okay and here i'll be writing code to work with the language service resource that we had created earlier but before we work with it guys there is one thing that we need to do okay there is one thing that we need to do we need to install a library and the name of that library is azure ai text analytics so let me go ahead and let me install it azure ai text analytics Okay, and here it says uh, there is an error. Maybe okay, there is a spelling mistake over here. So in between these two words, text and analytics, there is no hyphen, I believe. So let me correct that spelling mistake. And yes, now it works. In my scenario, it gives me a message saying requirement already satisfied. That means I've already installed that library earlier. But in your case, if you have not installed it, then the installation process will start. But make sure that you install this library before proceeding ahead fine so guys what we did two minutes back we created a language services resource now what we are doing is we are writing the code to work with that language services resource so let's go ahead and let's do that over here so one by line by line we'll try to write the code okay so let's go ahead let's do it so guys the first thing that i will do over here is i will try to make some necessary imports so let me do that okay so i will try to import the necessary classes for working with azure's text analytics api so let me import the necessary classes over here i'll just go ahead and do that let me import the necessary classes one more line to go and after that my import will be complete okay here we go and with this what we have done is um, we have made the necessary we have imported the necessary classes for working with azure's text analytics api so azure key credential is used to authenticate using a api key and text analytics client is the client class for interacting with the text analytics service fine after that let me go ahead and uh, just like with the last service that we worked with which was speech service right in order to interact with it we needed a uh, key and other details right with, with with respect to speech service we needed two things key and location in which that resource was created however in language service resource you need different things okay with speech services you needed key and region whereas with language service you will need key and endpoint so let me go ahead and let me store the same key and endpoint so let me get the key of my resource let me go to my resource and get the key here we go and let me also get the endpoint of my resource okay here we go i will also get the endpoint of my resource
all right fine and so basically guys over here what i have done is i have defined variables to the endpoint url and api key for uh, our uh, language uh, services resource that we have created right so now let's go ahead and let's proceed guys so what i will do is i will first make sure that azure accepts my key and uh, i have established authentication with the azure portal okay so i'll just go ahead and do that so using this class i will establish a connection with the azure portal so in order to get in i will have to pass my key so let me go ahead and do that once my credential is valid once my login credential is valid what i'll be doing is i will be performing this analysis of text in order to do that we need this class so here so let me go ahead and let me call this class this class is responsible for performing analysis on text okay so let me go ahead and let me do that so it needs two things first is the endpoint so let me go ahead and let me pass my endpoint and second it needs a confirmation that the credential was valid so let me pass that confirmation as well fine let me store this in a variable and now we are good to go ahead and now what i want to do is now that i have established the connection with the azure portal what i want to do is i want to perform actual analysis so the analysis that i want to perform is basically on reviews right those reviews are stored in these text files and those text files are in, present inside this reviews folder so i'll tell to my machine that there is a reviews folder okay so my reviews are stored in this folder called r e v i w s this is the name of that folder okay fine and then i will say for each file in that folder for each file in this folder i want to go ahead and specify the file name okay so i want to go ahead specify the file name so let me go ahead and let me do that okay here we go i'll just go ahead and save let me try to run this code and let's see whether i am able to print all the file names at least let me check whether i am able to print all the file names over here can't open okay sorry my mistake i have to go inside of this folder and then run this code so over here i am using os library but it is not imported so let me go ahead and let me import that os library over here so what i'll do is i'll just say import os so this library is helpful to work with our operating system okay fine so let's go ahead let's execute the code again and am i able to print the all the file names inside that folder yes i am fine and what i will do is uh let me make sure that i mention this file name in uh, different different lines okay so i'll just go ahead and do the same right okay now it's perfect so now what is my intention guys so this space that i have left what i want to do here in this space i want to print the actual reviews in those text files okay so let me go ahead and do that once i print those reviews then those uh, the analysis of those reviews i will do okay so i have deliberately included this space over here so that you can see those reviews inside these files as well fine so let's go ahead and let's do it so in order to get those reviews inside the files i will have to read the files so i will say open the file 
Okay, so I will say open the file. And which file do I want to open? That file is inside reviews folder. And inside reviews folder, take the file name. And based on the file name, you want to open it. And the contents in that file name will have an encoding of UTF-8, which is the default text encoding. And I want to read it. Fine. And the text that I am reading from that file, I want to print that text. So let me go ahead and let me do it. Let me print it in a new line. All right. Here we go. Fine. And now you can see uh, I am also able to print the reviews. So inside reviews, review file 5.txt, this is the review store. Inside review 4.txt, this is the review store. Inside review 3.txt, you can see the review store over here. Then inside review 2.txt, this is the review. And inside review 1.txt, this is the review. I'll just expand this window so you can see it properly. Okay, fine. So I've printed the reviews over here. Now what I want to do, I want to perform an analysis on those reviews, right? So let me go ahead and let me do that. So first, before doing analysis, I want to check uh, the language in which the reviews were written. Okay, so I can perform the analysis in a better way. So let me check the language in which the reviews were written. So I will tell my machine detect language. And let's detect the language over here correctly. I want to go ahead, detect the language correctly over here. Okay. Fine. And I'm just thinking, should I do any other changes in my code? or fine. let me not do any changes for now okay let me not do any changes let's go ahead and uh, the text that i'm reading so uh, in, in the first iteration of the loop i'll be reading a uh, text inside first file that text i will get and i will uh, detect the language of that text okay once i get the language of that text once i get the language of that what i'll be doing is uh, i will print it for the users okay so i will tell the users that guys this is your language and let me write the code correctly to print it the language value i will mention whether it is english language spanish language okay whatever it is i'll just go ahead and i will mention that to the user okay uh let me show over here let me correct that syntax issue and fine here we go and now we should be able to see the language as well Okay, here it says there is an error. Okay, is there an error in the spelling mistake? Okay. Yes, there was an error in spelling. I have corrected it. And now you can see the language as well, guys. So, for example, in review 5.txt, this was the review and it was in French language. Then, similarly, in review 4.txt, this was the review and it was in English language and so on. Okay. So this is one analysis that we have done language. What is the second analysis that you can do? From this text, can anyone mention in the chat what other analysis you we can do? Let me open up the chat. What other analysis we can do guys? Any other analysis that we can do? So one student has mentioned over here sentiment, right? So we can do sentiment analysis as well fine so let's go ahead and let's do that let's perform 
sentiment analysis over here so if we want to perform sentiment analysis that means whether the user was uh, sorry whether the review was positive or whether it was negative how to detect it let me go ahead and let me write the code for that so i'll just go ahead mention the code for the same so that text i'll be getting and i'll be performing a sentiment analysis of that text let me do that and whatever is the sentiment i want to go ahead and i want to print it to the user so let me go ahead and let me do the same all right so that sentiment value i please mute your mic guys okay if you have a doubt let me know okay fine all right so that sentiment value i want to print it to the user so apart from language i also want to print the sentiment of the review so let me go ahead and do that okay and here you can see it has done that over here for example in the first review it's uh, it said clean rooms good service great location so this was a positive review right and you can see from our analysis also we are getting to know that that it is a positive review in the second review you can see the review written by the user it says tired hotel with poor service so and so right so this is a negative review and you can see our analysis also confirms the same that is a negative review so you can do these types of analysis so first we have detected language that is one type of analysis second we have detected sentiment that is second type of analysis okay then you can also get the entities mentioned in the review okay so for example if there are any places mentioned any uh, items mentioned okay so all of those entities important entities what are the important entities mentioned in the review you can get that so let me mention the code to get the important entities so i will tell the azure portal to recognize the important entities over here so let's go ahead and let's do that so let's recognize the important uh, entities so let's do that and here i'll be writing the complete code to detect those entities and there would be multiple entities over here so what i'll be doing is i'll be using a for loop okay there will not just be one entity in the review there will be multiple entities so let me use a for loop to print them one by one okay let me print it to the user i'll just go ahead and do that and will be done soon one second so uh your i will say that please get the entity name as well as the category of that entity so whether that entity was a location or a car or whatever it is okay fine let me go ahead and let me implement the code so you can see it uh, clearly okay your uh there is a issue with our code there is a spelling mistake let's correct it and now it should work okay here i have a issue in my code let's see what is the issue let's try to understand it okay it seems there is a issue in getting this particular key okay fine in this scenario is the okay i'll just make sure to solve this issue over here so my code was a bit incomplete and now it should work okay over here that first issue got resolved now i have a second issue and that is with respect to the syntax 
So let me correct the syntax. And after correcting it, it should work. And it does work over here. Fine, and now we are able to see the entities. Let me max. Uh, let me maximize this window so you can see it. For example, guys, you can see in the first review uh, there were multiple entities, right? Uh, uh, there was a word staff mentioned. Okay, so you are seeing the name, uh, the entity name, and the category of that entity. Then there was a hotel name mentioned. OK, so entity name category of that entity. Similarly, next line entity name category of that entity. So this type of analysis you can do. So we have done it for all the five reviews that we had stored. So this is one task that you can do. OK, so up till now, what all things have we done? So with respect to the speech services category, we have implemented one task, which is to translate speech which is to translate speech from english language to either french or spanish or hindi similarly you can do it uh, you can convert it to other languages also okay but we stuck to these three fine uh, then as far as the language services category is concerned up till now what we have done we have tried to perform analysis on text okay uh, and what we'll do now is we'll take a 15 minute tea break or coffee break and after the tea of coffee break we'll come back and we'll continue our work with respect to language services category and we'll perform a second task with respect to language services category which will be to translate text. So translate text is still left. We'll be trying to do it. OK, so let's take a 15 minute tea break and we'll be back. And uh, after the tea break, uh, we'll continue our work with respect to language services category. Fine. So up till now, if there are any doubts, please let me know in the chat. OK, till then I'll just be on mute and uh, uh, we'll just take a 15 minute tea break. OK, so let me start a clock over here. Let me start a 15 minute timer. I'll just go ahead and I will start it. Uh, Smith, uh, as we are going on break, uh, is it fine that I will explain the steps and how to get the batch activated for this topic? Yeah, 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 you can do that. OK, OK, we'll do that. Thank you. OK. Hi guys, Chaitali this side again. Uh, I as I have explained you earlier that uh, we are providing the complementary learning achievement batch in this webinar. We are providing AI 900 and AI 102 badges as an achievement. So as you can see on the screen, uh, how you can celebrate and share your badges on your profiles like LinkedIn, Twitter. I will explain you all. So the batch uh, which we have provided, like we have shared the URLs in the chat box is for AI 900, that is Microsoft Azure Fundamental and for AI 102, that is designing and implementing uh, Microsoft Azure AI solution. So whatever has been taught or will be explained to you in this webinar, the study material related to that uh, comes under this batch. So I will explain you all how to share this batch 
or share this achievement on your profiles. First, you have to claim the batch, the steps and the URL for the batches has been mentioned in the Q&A section. You can see uh, there is a published uh, section in which we have mentioned the links, the URLs for the batch redemption and the steps also has been mentioned in it. For that, you have to create a learn a profile. I will explain you further how to create the learn profile and how to get your batch activated. Uh, for the desktop users, I will also explain uh, how to get this batch activated and share it on your LinkedIn profile. And also on Facebook and Twitter as well. So it will help you to get notice and help to boost your career. So as we have learned according to LinkedIn, there are chances that your profile will get noticed or get viewed 70% time more than the other profiles as you share these batches on your profile. Uh, this is for the mobile users, whoever uh, is on mobile, whoever is uh, watching this live, watching this webinar on your phone. Please, you, uh, you have to follow the steps and get your batch activated. And how you can share this batch on your LinkedIn profile. So yeah, these are the steps. As you can see, you have to go on Microsoft Learn Profile. I will share the link for that too. You have to go on Microsoft Learn Profile first. If you have a profile created on Microsoft Learn, it is well and good. If it, if it is not created, you have to create one. You have to sign in and create the profile. After that, uh, the links has been shared in the chat box as I told you earlier. Link for AI 900 batch as well as the link for AI 102. You just have to cl uh, like click on that link and get the batch activated. The pop up will come like uh, redeem button will come on your profile. You just have to click on that button and get the batch activated. Once the batch get activated, uh, you can see the batch under the achievement. Yeah, you can see on the screen uh, in my profile. I will get the achievements under that the batch will reflect. When you have completed the course, it will mention the date as well. And you can share on the profiles like LinkedIn profile, Facebook, Twitter, and also you can get it on your email as well. So the batch will look like this. Once you click on the print option here, you have uh, beside the share, you have a print option. Once you click on that option, you will get uh, get a batch reflected with your name and you have what you have completed. The topic will be mentioned and the date will be mentioned. Hello, Chaitali. Yes, uh, yes, uh, yes. I am explaining it ahead. Uh, I hope you can see my screen. Yeah, I will get a pop up like redeem. Once I click on the redeem, I will get a view profile option. Uh, and here is my profile. Chaitali. Sorry. Your screen is not visible properly. Uh, you have an uh, your uh, live window. Just a minute, just. Can you share content? I hope it is visible now. Yes, yes, it's visible. Yes, OK, thank you. Uh, guys, here you can see I have created my profile. If you haven't created the profile, you just have to simply go on new tab. 
you have to go on learn pro learn yeah you can see microsoft learn i have clicked on that link and i have to create as i have created already my profile has been created so it is giving me this option but uh, once you go if you have not created the profile you you will get a sign in option on the right hand side you have to create the profile first after creating the profile what you have to do is simply uh, open the new tab uh, click the link over here uh, the links which we have provided to you for ai 900 and ai 102 once i click the link over here i will get a pop up and my batch will get activated so i'll make sure the uh, get your batch activated like uh, let's see uh, uh, here you can see my batch under the achievement in my profile under the achievement i can see the modules learning path related to that batch then the course which i have activated batch for here i can see my batch which has been activated on 19th december i have completed this uh, course and i have got this batch and I, once i click on the share button i will get the profiles on which we, i have to share the link or the batch which i have to share so i am going on my linkedin profile now See, on my LinkedIn profile, I will get this batch with a message that I have got a Microsoft Azure AI fundamental batch, and I am proud to sh uh, share and uh, celebrate this achievement. So this prof uh, this batch will reflect on your LinkedIn profile. So make sure you get this batch activated and share it on your profiles. Example of LinkedIn, you can share it on Facebook, Twitter as well. let me go back see you can see the pop up like this you will get a redeem button over here you simply have to click on that button i have already create i have already redeemed the code so it is showing that you have already redeemed and you have got the batch so the batch will reflect under the achievements yeah you can see i will get the modules for that batch i can revise through that i will get the learning path and of course i will get the batch over here yeah you can see i have completed my batches or the completed the course which uh, i have i can see on my profile also once i click on the print button and i go down i can see my batch like you can edit your display name like i want uh, chaitali sound i can uh, keep it as chaitali sound if i want to change my name as chaitali only i can edit my name like edit uh, go on edit a display name and you can edit your name so you will get this batch like this the achievement uh, mentioned like this so make sure you get the batch activated it is very helpful for your revision regarding the topics on ai 900 as well as for ai 102 and if you facing any problem while the redemption or you have any doubt or queries regarding it please let me know in the chat box so i can help you with it hello chaitali हेलो चैताली 
Yes, sir. Yes. Uh, can you uh, share that uh, redemption process so they can? Yes. Uh, Guys, do it ASAP, ASAP. We are waiting for that only. OK, after that, we are uh, restarting our session. Continue our session. After redemption, please uh, drop a message that you have redeemed the batch. Uh, OK, I can see one question where I can get the code. Someone has asked where I can get the code. Guys, uh, simply you have to follow the step which has been mentioned on the screen. And the link has been mentioned in the chat box. Uh, both the links has been mentioned in the chat box. The link which has been provided uh, in the chat box is for AI 900 and AI 102. You have to click one by one and get the get both the batches activated. You have to follow the steps. Get your learn account open. If you don't have one, if you have a learn profile created, it's well and good. After that, the links which has been shared, the URLs which has been shared in the chat box, you just have to copy that URL in new tab to get that batch activated. Once you click on the redeem button, the batch will reflect on your profile under the achievements. Uh, Sangeeta has asked, uh, is it possible to download the soft copy? Yes, uh, you can download the soft copy. Also, you can share it on your LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. Also, you can share it on your email as well. So you can download that soft copy, soft, co uh, soft copy with you. Guys, please put yes if you have done with the redemption so we can move ahead with the webinar. I can see many of you has written done. I'm hoping no one is facing issue while redeeming the batch. If you have any doubt, please let me know in the chat box. Yes, guys, we are waiting for you all to get the batch activated so we can move ahead with the webinar. Please type yes, done with the redemption if you have done with uh, the redemption of both the batches.
uh, i hope everyone was able to get the batch activated i can see the uh, everyone has mentioned done yes you are still redeeming the badges so should we wait or should we go ahead please do uh, get your badge activated so we can move ahead with the session also please note the ai 900 batch is for fundamental and ai 102 batch is for advanced level so the both the batches which has been shared is for whole series please note we have three more webinars coming up like we have the webinar uh, on 20th that is tomorrow day after tomorrow and on 22nd december 2 so you have to attend that webinar also to get the uh, you know the reflection of whatever we have taught you you will get the material for that in the batch so you have to attend that webinars also so we are sharing it earlier so you you can access the material you can go through the material and join the webinars for the webinars also guys if you are not able to get the batch activated please mention the uh, problem please let me know the problem as some uh, someone of you has written i am uh, still not able to get the batch activated so please let me know what is the problem in the chat box so i can help you Uh, yes smith now you can go ahead and uh, you can take over the further topics okay thank you all right guys so let's go ahead and let's continue our ai journey so before we go ahead let's have a recap of what we have done in the first half of this webinar so we started by having a understanding of what is artificial intelligence so we understood that artificial intelligence or ai is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes first purpose is to get insights from data second purpose is to get prediction from data now how do we do that what are the tools that help us to uh help us to um achieve these two purposes so there are two main tools first is the tool of machine learning second is the tool of deep learning so what is machine learning so in simple words guys machine learning uh, is like teaching a computer to recognize patterns and make decisions based on past examples so imagine that you are teaching a child to differentiate between cats and dogs by showing them lots of pictures of each so the child learns the general characteristics of cats and dogs and uses this Uh, knowledge to identify new pictures on the other hand what is deep learning so deep learning is a advanced tool of ai wherein we use something called neural networks which are designed to mimic the way how human brains work so it's like not only teaching the child to differentiate between cats and dogs but also helping them understand the subtle differences like the breed of the dog or the color of the cat without specifically telling them about these details so deep learning systems can learn from massive amounts of data and can pick up on complex patterns that might not be immediately obvious however machine learning can do that okay so deep learning can pick up uh, complex patterns that might not be immediately obvious however machine learning does not have the capability to do that fine so we understood what is ai then what are the tools of ai and after that we went ahead and we tried to understand how you can use the azure cloud platform to achieve your ai needs so azure cloud platform offers many ai related services those ai related services can be put into four main categories first is the speech services category second is the language services category third is document intelligence services category 
and fourth is vision services category. So we already had a introduction to the speech services category. We did implement a practical lab on the same. Similarly, with respect to language services category, we have implemented a lab wherein we try to analyze text. Let me implement a second lab with respect to the same services category. So in the language services category only, we'll implement the second lab wherein we'll try to translate text. OK, so let's try to translate a given text. All right, so let's go ahead and let's do it. So what are the steps in order to do it? So before implementing any lab, guys, you might have observed that we go to the Azure portal and create a service that is needed for that lab. For example, in order to implement lab with respect to speech services, we went to the Azure portal and created a speech services resource. Similarly, in order to analyze text, we went to the lab, uh, Azure portal and created a language services resource. Now, similarly, in order to translate text, we will create another resource on the Azure platform. So let's go ahead and let's do it. So I will go ahead, open up my Azure portal. And once you open up your Azure portal, you have to search for Azure AI services. Here it is. And on the left hand side, there is an option to create a resource called translator resource. Here it is. So I'll go ahead and click it. And it allows me an option to create that resource. So let me create it. And when I want to create it, when you want to create any resource in Azure, it will give you a form similar to this. And you just have to fill in the details in that form. So let me go ahead and let me fill in the details over here. So I'll just go ahead, fill in all the details. And we should be done soon. OK, fine. So I've filled this form. And now I will just go ahead and create this resource over here. The Azure portal will confirm with me one time. Uh, that am I fine with all these details? So I'll just go ahead and review them. I am fi indeed fine with them. So I will just go ahead and click on the create button to create this resource for me. So this resource that we have created is called translator service resource. OK. So till this resource is uh, being created, let's go ahead and uh, move on to our Visual Studio code. And what we'll do now is we'll try to translate text. So same reviews that we worked with before the tea break. OK, same reviews will work with now also. However, before the tea break, we tried to analyze the reviews. However, now what we'll be doing is we'll try to convert the language in which these reviews are written. So if at all, let's say we encounter this review, which is not in English language, it is in French language. So I'll try to convert this French review to English review. OK, so let's go ahead. Let's do that over here. So let's start by writing our code. So I'll go ahead, create a file over here called translate. Let me create a file. Translate text.py. OK, and let me go ahead and let me complete writing my code over here. So first what I'll do is I'll go ahead and import the necessary libraries. Let me do that. I'll just go ahead and do it. First, I will import the OS library that will help us to work with the operating system. So for example, let's say I want to search for any files in my operating system, then this library will help me to do that. OK, uh, then I will just go ahead and. Import another library over here called the request library. So let me go ahead, import that library. Which is the request library. 
Okay, here it is. And after that, after importing all the necessary libraries, I will just go ahead and continue writing my code. Now in all the coding files that we have worked with, we did store some values that are needed for connection to the Azure portal. For example, if you remember in the first lab that we implemented, we tried to store two things, key value and region value, right? Then in the second lab that we implemented, we tried to store two values, key value and endpoint value. In this lab, guys, we'll need to store three values. First is key value, second region value, third endpoint value. So let me go ahead and let me store those values in a variable because we'll be using them ahead. Okay. So let me get the key value from the Azure portal. So I'll go to the translator service resource that we have created and get the key value from there. Okay. Then the second thing, as I mentioned, we need a region value. So let me go ahead and let me get the region value. So this resource is created in East US. So I'll mention the same. Now, similarly, let me go ahead and let me get the endpoint value. Okay. So the resource that will help me to perform this translation, right? What is the API endpoint of the same? So I'll get that endpoint value as well. And here it is. Fine. Uh, now what I will do is I will just go ahead and uh, make sure that I'm able to at least go through all the files in this reviews folder, right? So there is a folder over here called reviews. So the text that I want to translate is stored in this folder called reviews. So I'll just go ahead, go through all the files in this folder. Let me go ahead. I'll just iterate through all the files in this folder over here. And uh, over here, is there a spelling mistake that I have done? Okay, let me check what is the problem expected. Huh, fine. No spelling mistake as such. All right. Uh, let's go ahead. And what I will do is I will iterate through all the files in this folder. So first I will check, am I able to get the file names? Let me go ahead and let me print the file names over here. So I'll go ahead, print the file names, just like I did in the last lab. Let me check. Am I able to print them? So what I will do is I will open this folder in the terminal. And then to my terminal, I will say, please execute this file called translate text.py. Okay, and I am able to print all the file names review1.txt, then we have review2.txt, and so on. All right, fine. Let's go ahead. Now, what I will do is I will go through each of these files and read the content in it. Okay. So let me go through each of these files. So for reading each of the files, I will have to open it up. So let me open up the files. So I'll give a path for that. So I'll say, please read it. The content in that file is of encoding UTF-8. And I will tell my machine to read it. After reading, I will get some text. And that text, I just want to go ahead and print it to the user. So let me go ahead and let me print that text to the user. Okay, so now you can see below the name of that file, we are also able to see the content in that file. Okay, you can see review folder.txt is the name of that file and then the content in that file. All right, now what I want to do is I want to detect the language that is there in this review. So if it is not an English language, I want to convert it to English language, right? So first I will have to detect. 
whether the language is of English language or not. Okay, so what I will do is I will say that to this API endpoint, I want to add a string called slash detect. And in order to add it, what I will do is I'll just concatenate these two things together. So I'll say endpoint plus this extra path. And I will get the entire URL. This is the URL where I want my request to go. OK, and before passing the request, there are some things that I have to specify. So in the request, I need th three things. First, the parameters in the request. So let me go ahead and let me mention that. So I'll say the API endpoint that I'm calling should be assumed of version 3.0. So let me go ahead and let me mention the same. Then the second thing that I need is the headers for the request. Let me go ahead and let me mention the headers as well. And here what I will do is one by one. I'll just go ahead mention the headers. OK, all of this information you will find on the official Microsoft documentation. So if you're wondering how to know all these details, you will find it in the Microsoft's official documentation. OK, all the things that are required to call this API endpoint. Everything is mentioned in the official documentation. Fine. So subscription key I'm passing, then uh, region. Let me pass the region as well. Subscription region. Okay, subscription region value I have stored that same value I'll pass over here. And the response that I'll get or uh, should be of JSON type. So I will say application forward slash JSON. All right, so first was parameters for the request, second headers for the request. Third, what I need is body for the request. So let me go ahead and let me mention the same. So the text that I'm passing is present in this variable called text. So let me go ahead and let me pass that variable over here. OK, so that we so if this variable was ABC, then over here also I would have mentioned ABC. Currently the variable name is TXT. So here also I'm passing TXT. OK, fine. So these are the three things needed for the request. Now let me go ahead and let me post the request to the URL. OK, to the endpoint URL. So I'll say request dot post. To my endpoint URL, where is the URL? Here it is. Let me post it and those three things that I had mentioned earlier. Let me just go ahead and pass the same along with the request. So first parameters, second headers, third the body. So let me go ahead and let me pass that as well. Okay, fine. And I should get a response back. OK, if I pass a request to the endpoint URL, I should get a response from them. So in order to get response, that response will be of JSON format, right? Because we have said it in our code. So we are let me get that response back from the Azure portal. And whatever is the response, what I want to do is I just want to print it to everyone. OK, let me go ahead and let me do that. OK, and I'm printing the response over here. Fine, so over here you can see the response that is sent. So for example, uh, first of all, let me clear this terminal. It looks too cluttered. Let me again execute the code. OK, here you go. And you can see over here, guys, for example, this review one.txt file inside which we have this review. 
and this review we have sent to the azure portal to understand in which language it was written and you can see it is written in english language similarly second review written in english language third review written in english language fourth review also written in english language but the fifth review you can see is written in a french language okay so in order to print the language to the user currently you can see lot of unwanted information also i don't want that unwanted information i only want to print the language value so let me go ahead let me print the language value over here okay let me run the code again for you guys and now you will be able to see the language value for example this review is written in french language okay let me print the language in a better manner over here i will say language of review language of review okay and whatever is that language it will be printed to the user let me run the code again for you and now the language that is printed is printed in a more uh, reader friendly man okay so you can see language of review all right fine so where we have detected language and now what we want to do is if the language is not english then i want to go ahead and translate it to english okay so let me put a if condition over here i will say if language is not equal to english then please convert it to english and in order to do that to the api endpoint i will have to include this string called forward slash translate so this is the api endpoint to this api endpoint i want i will have to include this string at the end called translate okay and uh, that will uh, create the entire url for me and going forward i will send a request to that url to do the language translation fine so let me get the endpoint and to that endpoint let me add add this extra string over here so it will form the entire url and fine let me send a request to this url but before sending the request we need three things right so just like earlier before sending request we needed three things those were first is parameters second headers third body now also we'll need those same three things first is parameters okay so i will say the api version is 3.0 okay so these apis keep on updating so in the first version it would uh, be less efficient as the versions increase you know the efficiency increases fine so currently we want to use the 3.0 version of the api okay i will say i want to translate from which language that language value will be stored over here in this variable okay and i want to convert to which language so i will say i want to convert to english fine so convert to english all right so in order to pass my request first thing i have created i have specified my parameters second thing that i need to specify is the headers so let me go ahead and let me specify the headers over here just like i did earlier in fact the same code i can copy and paste it okay same exact code i can copy and paste it over here okay fine and then the third la third and last thing that i need to specify is the body so just like i did it earlier i specify the body over here as well okay have done that now let me go ahead let me pass post the request to the url so i'll say post the request to this url that i have made and while passing a request to mention the parameters then the headers uh and then the request body as well fine and once i send a request the azure portal will send a response back so i just want to go ahead and get that response from the user 
so let me go ahead and let me do the same so let me get that response back from the user and let me print that response for you guys okay so i'll just go ahead print the response for you guys here we go let me execute my code and here it is so if the review is not in english language it will convert it to english language here it seems there is an issue with the code there is some spelling mistake that has happened okay let's go ahead and let's correct that spelling mistake uh, what i have done is i have not stored the language value in a variable so let me go ahead let me store the language value in a variable okay here we go and fine and now you will see what will happen is if the review is not in english language it will convert it to english language for example this last review was french and french is obviously not english that's why it converted to english you can see the review has been converted to english but there is some other unnecessary information printed on the screen i don't want to print that unnecessary information i only want to print that translated review okay so let me go ahead and let me get it i only want to get the translated review from this collection let me only get the translated review okay and that translated review i want to print it to the user all right here we go and now you will see that if the review is not in english it would have con correctly converted to english but there is a spelling mistake in our code let's go ahead and let's correct that spelling mistake this should be ended with s okay fine and now we are done and you can see this fifth review over here it was in french language right and that french review has been converted to english review fine so guys with respect to the language services category we have implemented two labs first lab was to analyze text second lab was to translate text now what we'll do guys is we'll move on to our third category of ai services which is document intelligence services category okay so if at all you have any document let's say a pdf document right so if you are a working professional you might be receiving invoices in your mail so let's say you want to do an analysis on those invoices okay how do you do that okay so we'll learn how to do it okay so whether it is any document pdf document any document if you want to perform analysis on the same then we have this category of service called document intelligence services category fine so let's go ahead and let's work with it over here so what we'll be doing is we'll be going to our azure portal and let's go move ahead to our azure portal let's go to the home page and we will try to search for this service called document intelligence okay so this is the category of service that i want to work with and here i'll just go ahead and i'll say i want to create this service okay remember that if you want to use any service in azure you will have to create it as a resource so here i am creating it as a resource over here so it gives me a form to fill in before azure will create that resource let me fill in that form and soon will be done So here, what I'll be doing is I'll be analyzing PDF. So let me give it that name over here. You can give any name. It's just that that name should be unique across the entire Azure platform. So no one else should have created this document intelligence resource called Analyze PDF because I am using that name. Okay. So only that name can be used by me, 
if it has not been used across any other resources created in document intelligence. OK, fine. Let me go ahead. Let me create it. And within a few seconds, this document intelligence resource will be created. Once it is created, then I can go ahead and work with it inside Visual Studio Code. So just wait for a few seconds. It should be done. And meanwhile, uh, while this creation is happening, while this creation of document intelligence resource is happening, let's go to Visual Studio Code. And now what we'll be doing, guys, is uh, we have this PDF over here. OK, you can see this invoice PDF. It is shown to you on your screen. So I want to analyze this. OK, how to do it? All of that we'll try to understand. So let's go ahead and let's understand the same. OK, so if you have this invoice, it is stored in your, uh, let's say, Google Drive or any other place. OK, it is stored in GitHub, wherever you want to store it in whichever storage it is. Uh, you just have to mention the link of this PDF in the code that we will be writing and our code will perform an entire analysis on that document. Fine. Let's see how to do this. Eh? So what I'll be doing is uh, before proceeding with any code, let me install a very important library. And the name of that library is Azure AI Form Recognizer. So let me install that library. Azure AI Form Recognizer. OK, sorry, I thought I was typing, but I was not OK. Let me type it again. OK, here we go. And you can see in my scenario, it tells me that I have already installed this library earlier. OK, uh, in your case, if it's not installed, that installation process will start. All right, now that the library has been installed, uh, let's go ahead and let's continue writing our code. So what I'll be doing. Is I'll create a new file over here called. Analyze doc.py and first of all what i'll do is i will import the necessary libraries that are needed so let me do that so first i will import this class called azure cre credential okay from azure.core.credentials module azure.core.credentials module So let me go ahead and do it. OK, fine. So what is the purpose of this? So here guys, what we are doing, uh, we are importing Azure Cree credential from azure.core.credentials module. The reason for this is we need to authenticate the client application with Azure services using an API key. So for the, that reason, this class will be needed. OK, let me do the second import over here. So I'll just go ahead and perform the second import. So say from azure.ai.form recognizer. Import this class called document analysis client. This is the class that will actually perform that analysis on any given document, whether it is a PDF document or any other document. Fine. I am done with the imports. Now in order to connect my code to the Azure portal, I will need some things. OK, and I'll be needing two things to be exact. So first is the endpoint and second is the key. OK, so first is the endpoint. One second, let me open it up. Let me go to the document intelligence resource that we created. And from there, I'll need it. I'll need two things. First is the endpoint of the resource. Second is key of that resource. Fine. So let me go ahead. Let me copy the value from the portal and store it in my code because I'll be needing it. 
Okay, so endpoint value I have stored. Let me store the key value as well. So what is the key of that resource? Whatever it is, I have stored it in my code. All right, fine. Uh, next, what I want to do is I will also store the URL of the file that I want to analyze. URL of the document that I want to analyze. Okay, so this PDF I have. Uh, it's already available on the internet. Uh, here is the link of the same. Okay, it is already available on GitHub. So that same document I'm using over here. Okay, it could be deployed anywhere. It's just that the link of that file should either start with HTTP or HTTPS. Okay, and that document will be analyzed by Azure. Okay. Uh, if you have a file in your local storage, let's say in your C drive, D drive, or laptop, in that case, this Azure portal won't be able to help you because the link of that file should either start with HTTP or HTTPS. So you can upload it on Google Drive, and once it is uploaded on Google Drive, that uh, file uh, URL will start from HTTP or HTTPS. So that is also fine. So upload it anywhere GitHub, Google Drive, that will work. Okay, just make sure that it's uploaded on the internet. Uh, here, luckily, this document that I want to analyze is already uploaded on the internet. Here is the link of that. So I'll just copy that link, paste it in my code. Okay, I'll say file URL. Okay, and I've pasted it in my code over here. Fine. And uh, let me go ahead. And let me mention some other things that are needed. So to my machine, I will mention that in this file. The language is English language. OK, the language is English language. Then. Uh, in order to analyze this uh, file document, which model I want to use now, you can use the pre-built model that uh, Azure has. Or you can create your custom models as well. In this webinar, we won't see how to create custom models. They will be shown to you in the upcoming webinars of this series. For today, let's work on pre-built model that Azure offers. Okay, so let me mention the idea of that pre-built model. So I'll just go ahead and mention the ID, which is pre-built invoice. So for invoice, there is a model that Azure has made. For different different type of documents, there are different different type of models. Currently, my document is an invoice type of document, so I'm using this model over here. Okay, fine. After this, what I will do is I will just go ahead and initiate my document analysis class over here, so that later I can use it for doing some work. In order to initialize it, I'll have to pass two things. First is the endpoint of my Azure resource that I've created. So let me go ahead and let me pass the same. And second is. Uh, the. Credential that I have obtained after entering to my Azure portal. So in order to enter to my Azure portal. I will have to use this class called Azure key credential to which I will have to pass my key. Once I pass my key, I'll be able to enter inside. The Azure portal. And that login credential, I'll just go ahead and I will pass to my code. All right, fine. So where I have initialized this document analysis class so that I can use it later for performing my analysis. Here we go. And now that it is analyzed, uh, it is in, uh, initialized. I can go ahead use this class object that I have created to actually perform some analysis. So let me begin the analysis over here. So I'll tell my code to begin analysis on this document. So let me begin analysis from this document and I will have to specify the URL of that document. OK, so three things are needed. First, what model you want to use on that document? Second, what is the URL? Of the file document on which you want to perform analysis and third, what is the language in which? Uh, what is the uh, language of content in that document? 
okay so i have already mentioned over here that it is english language so the same information i'll pass to my code okay fine and after doing this i should get a result from the azure platform so let me get a result so let me get a result and what i will be doing is that result i will convert it to a python dictionary let me go ahead let me convert it to python dictionary so in that result i'll get some information i'll convert it to python dictionary and if it is a dictionary there will be multiple key value pairs in that dictionary so i'll use a for loop okay so let me go ahead let me use a for loop okay here we go so for each key value pair the key value uh, the key i'm storing in this variable called id the value i'm storing in this variable called receipt fine and let me just go ahead print all the values in the dictionary so that i can understand what all things have been analyzed in this document i'll just go ahead and execute this file uh, this file is present inside this folder let me open up that folder in my terminal and let me tell my terminal to execute this file okay so it says resource not found okay what is the issue oh file model id is uh, there a issue in my syntax i don't think so prevailed you know is the name okay i guess it starts with cap a small i if i'm not wrong let me try that i guess it was a spelling mistake let me try Ah, okay, that error got resolved, but now there is this different error over here. It says pooler. Ah, because over here, this analysis that I have made, I have not stored in this variable called pooler. So let me store in this variable. After this, I'll be able to execute my code. Okay. the lots of things to make it more uh, user friendly i'll just say get the keys from that dictionary because we have dictionaries inside dictionary over here let me go ahead execute my code okay so it has analyzed many things from that pdf right so for example uh, you can see the amount due uh, billing address all of that values i am yet to print but at least you can see these all things that has identified now what is the values of these of these things that it has identified let's see for example uh, if i print vendor name what is the vendor in this invoice contoso right the vendor in this invoice is contoso so over here if i try to uh, see the value of this key called vendor name it should tell me quanto so okay this to check if the model has behaved correctly or not let me go ahead and let me ch check the same so over here i will say print the vendor name uh the vendor name over here let me get it uh in this scenario i will just say receipts dot fields dot get i want to get the vendor name whatever value i have in vendor name that i want to print it so let's print the same okay i'll just go ahead execute my code let's see and it should tell me that vendor name is contoso if my analysis is correct over here there is a spelling mistake it seems you see it's okay uh 
no attribute fields oh sorry my mistake the spelling mistake receipt without a s that is the name of my variable right i'll just correct the code and here it is so if my model has worked correctly it should tell me that in the pdf the doc uh, pdf document vendor name was contoso and i uh, will just wait for uh, some time and it should tell me that vendor name is Con contoso let's wait and yes yeah, so over here it does tell me contoso limited however i can see some unwanted information still so what i will do is uh, let me remove that inf unwanted information in fact so i'm getting a a uh, key value pair type of collection so this value is having this key over here called value so this is the key so let me mention the same okay now let's see now that unwanted information will be removed only i'll get the vendor name okay you can see there is some unwanted information previously now you can see i'm only getting the vendor name previously what was happening previously if i show to you ha huh, previously this is the output of previous execution here you can see there are lots of things for example in that uh, pdf where do you see that vendor name so coordinates of those things are given okay fine uh, so because on every detection that it does it draws a you can say a polygon over it so what are the coordinates of that polygon okay uh, your which type of polygon it creates here it creates a rectangle by default so whatever are the coordinates of it it will uh, just give it for example a rectangle has four points it gives the coordinates of those four points over here you can see coordinates of those four points point 1 of rectangle point 2 of rectangle point 3 point 4 and so on okay so uh, those were the unwanted information we have just removed it and i just wanted to print the vendor name and i am able to get it fine similarly you can get other things as well okay so for example if you want to see the customer name for example in my invoice uh, there would have been some customer name mentioned ah uh, yes and over here if i want to print it i can go ahead and do that so customer name can be obtained over here let me go ahead execute the code and now apart from vendor name you will get customer name as well so these are the type of analysis that you can do on a document with help of azure platform and you can see our customer name was microsoft corporation same thing was shown in invoice that vendor name was contoso but customer customer name was microsoft corporation here it is customer name microsoft corporation same thing is being shown over here okay so it does this type of analysis on documents as well okay so with this you have got introduced to three type of uh, you can say category of services category of ai services that azure offers first is speech services category second language services category third document intelligence services category okay here what did we try to do here we try to analyze text sorry analyze a pdf document similarly you can analyze any other type of documents as well okay your guys in this webinar we are just having a overview of uh, how you can use azure to fulfill your ai needs okay going forward in the uh, remaining webinars that are uh, that will be available in our series will be deep diving into each of these services okay so make sure that you attend those webinars as well uh, this is just the introduction webinar today you are you are just getting introduced to uh, what are the capabilities of azure cloud platform as far as ai is concerned okay but uh, the in depth 
uh, teaching will happen later in the upcoming webinars of our series. OK, so make sure that you attend those webinars as well. OK, fine. So up till now uh, we had understanding of three. Category of services that Azure offers first is speech services category, third language services category. Oh, sorry, first is speech services category, second language services category, third document intelligence service category. And before we move on to the fourth and last services category, uh, I will hand it over to Chaitali. Chaitali, I believe at 7 p.m. you wanted to communicate something to the students, right? Uh, yes, Smith. Uh, if uh, any one of you have any doubt regarding the batch redemption or if you have any questions, please put it in the chat box. Uh, this time frame is to get you uh, get you to uh, know about the batch redemption, the details regarding why we are sharing it. And also if you have any doubt questions, we can follow up with that. So if you have any question or doubt, you can just put it in the chat box so we can. Help you with it. OK. Fine, so uh, let me know Chaitali if there are any other announcements you can interrupt me in between. OK, till then I'll just continue with my uh, session. All right, so let's go ahead guys and let's move on to our fourth and last category of service, which is the vision service. OK, so here you will be able to work with images and videos. OK, so if you want to analyze images, if you want to analyze videos, you can go ahead and do that. OK, so Azure Cloud Platform uh, does offer you that capability as well to work with images and videos. So we'll be doing two things. We'll be analyzing images. We'll also be analyzing video. OK, and let's see how to do both of them. First, let's go ahead and let's analyze images. So what I'll be doing, I'll just move on to my Azure portal and uh, in order to analyze images, we'll have to create a new resource in the Azure portal. So for that, what you have to do is just search for Azure AI services in the search bar. Here we go. And on the left hand side, uh, there is an option to create Azure AI services multi service account. This is the one that you have to create. So in order to work with any a uh, vision related task. That means if you want to analyze images, you want to analyze videos, you have to create this multi service account. So let me create it over here. So I'll just go ahead and create it. And uh, when we click on the option to create it, prompts us a form that we have to fill. So I'll just go ahead and fill in that form over here. So let me go ahead, fill in that form. OK, I'll just review this form one last time. And I feel all the details are fine, so let me go ahead and let me create this resource. And I'll be using this resource to work with. Images or to or in other words to analyze images and to analyze videos. Fine, so let's go ahead and do that. We'll wait for a few seconds to make sure that the creation is complete. It is complete now. So let me go to that resource. Fine, now that this resource is created, what we can do is uh, we can work with it in Visual Studio Code. So let me go to Visual Studio Code. Let me go to this folder called Vision. And here there are some uh, images that I want to analyze. OK, there is a building image, there is a person image. I have this street image over here. So for example, let me take this image, street image. What I want to do is I want to perform analysis like what are the different objects in this image? What are the different? Uh, where are the different people in this image? OK, all of those analysis I want to perform. So how to do that before doing that? What you need to do is. You need to install this library called Azure Cognitive Services Vision Computer Vision. It's a big name. I will repeat it again. 
the name of that library is azure cognitive services vision computer vision so what i am doing is inside the azure library there is a module called cognitive services inside it there is another sub module called vision inside there is another sub module called computer vision only that sub module i am installing not the entire azure library because it is very very big so only this sub module i am installing so let me go ahead and let me install that sub module over here okay it seems there is some spelling mistake let me correct it over here uh let me check again any spelling mistake in my code yes cognitive spelling is wrong okay fine after correcting that spelling mistake it works and it tells me that uh, i've already installed this uh, library earlier uh, in your case if it's not installed then the installation process will start but fine now let's go ahead and let's start writing our code so what i will do is i'll create a new file over here called analyze images and now let's go ahead so let's start by writing code one at a time okay line by line let's go ahead and let's understand the reasoning behind it so what i will do is uh, first i will try to import some necessary libraries so let's do that i will import some necessary libraries over here okay so in order to work with the image i'm importing this uh, image module in order to sorry this image class in order to uh, draw over that image for example if i see anything on that image i want to draw a box over it so for that we have this image draw class okay then in order to uh, detect things uh, from that image i will have to make that import as well so there is a class called sdk so i'll go ahead and import it sorry not a class called sdk uh, there is a module called azure uh, inside the azure folder there is another folder called ai inside that folder i have another folder called vision that folder i am just uh, referencing as sdk okay and then i will have to plot something on the console so for that i will use matplotlib library from matplotlib import pyplot as plt okay fine so uh, the first import that i have done in the first line it imports the image and image draw modules from pil pil stands for a python imaging library uh, and this import i have done for imaging image image processing then next i have uh, imported the azure vision sdk uh, to use the azure's uh, computer vision services uh, third i have uh, imported pyplot from matplotlib for uh, image visualization and annotation that i'll be performing fine and then next let's go ahead now uh, what i'll be doing is i'll be setting the image uh, uh you can say path so what is the path of the image that i want to analyze so let me mention the same over here so i will say the image are in images folder and inside the images folder there is a, Im a image called street.jpg okay so this is the jpg uh, image that i want to analyze so fine i have mentioned the path and i have saved it in a variable so i can use it later all right fine uh then i'll just go to my azure portal let me check is there a uh, endpoint given yes there is okay so here guys in order to uh, connect my code with the azure resource that i have created i'll need two things 
first is the endpoint of that resource and second is key of that resource. So let me store the endpoint. Then I'll go ahead and get the key as well. OK, so let me go ahead and let me get the key over here. All right, now I've saved these two things in a variable so that later I can go ahead and use it. Now let me go ahead and what I'll be doing is uh, let me establish a connection with the resource that I've created. So let me go ahead and let me do the same. I'll just go ahead, establish a connection. In order to do it, I'll need two things, endpoint and key. Those two things I'll pass. And fine. Uh, later, what I'll be doing is uh, I want to set the analysis options. So in order to set it, first I'll have to call this method called image analysis options. Image analysis options. OK, fine. And then next what I'll be doing is uh, I want to specify over here what all analysis I want to perform. So I will say that I want to perform many things. I want to have a caption to the image. OK, so. Let me go ahead and let me specify the same. So I will say over here. I want to have a caption. There's one feature that I want. Now there will be multiple captions that it will uh, generate, but I want to get the best caption. OK, that has the uh, highest confidence level that machine that the Azure portal feels more confident over uh, more confident over. OK, so it will display that one caption. But what about the other captions? So if you want to display all the captions, even those that Azure was not confident over, those are called as dense uh, captions. OK, so I will uh, tell my code that I want to view those dense captions as well. I repeat. OK, what is the difference between caption and de dense captions? Dense captions collect, uh, contains a collection of all the captions that were thought by the Azure portal. OK, whereas cap uh, out of those dense captions, the best caption that has the highest confidence that will be stored in this variable over here called KPTION. OK, so the best caption will be stored in this variable. But what about all the other captions? If you want to see those, you can see those as well. And those collections of all captions are called dense captions. Fine. Then uh, you can do many, many things. You can get uh, objects in that uh, image. OK, so I'll write code for that. Objects you can get, uh, you can detect people in that image. So I'll write code for that. OK, so whatever you want to detect, it has to be mentioned over here. OK, only those things you will be able to detect. There, there are other things as well, for example, tags image tags OK. Uh, fine, but uh, I don't want tags. I'm fine with these four things. All right, let's go ahead and what I'll do now is. Uh, let me. Pass this image. To the Azure portal. OK, so let me go ahead and let me do that. Or I should say I want to make it ready to pass it to the Azure portal. In fact, for doing that, we have this class called vision source. To that I'll pass my image file. I'm saying that I want my image to be ready to be passed to the Azure portal. OK, and now let me actually pass it. 
So in order to do it, we'll use this class called image analyzer. And what are the things that I need to do over here? The first thing that I need to do is uh, I need to make sure that this authentication that has happened with respect to the Azure portal is saved in a variable so that I can use it later. So this authentication I'll pass. The second thing that I'll pass is the image. The third thing that I'll pass are the analysis options. Okay. And this should give me an object of image analyzer. Fine, so I'll just go ahead and save it in a variable so I can use it later. Fine, and let me just go ahead and using this object, let me actually perform the analysis. So I'll go ahead and do that. When I perform the analysis, I'll get a result. And let me show that result to you guys. So if I want to get the image captions, what I'll do is I'll just say print. I will just introduce a heading over here that I am now going to print caption. And in the next line, the individual captions, I'll just go ahead and print them. OK, so let me go ahead and do that. Uh, let me print the captions one by one. So what I will do is in order to print it, I will get it from this dictionary or this JSON uh, output that I've obtained, JSON result that I've obtained. Let me print the caption. So I'll just go ahead, run the code. Let me run the code. And we'll be able to get a caption from that image. So in this image, what I'm what what is the person doing? That person is walking a dog, right? So where I should get a similar caption, something like that. OK, here I'm getting an error. It seems there is some issue in my code. Let's try to uh, figure out that issue. So in this scenario. OK, my mistake, guys. And now should work. Yes, and I'm getting a caption where let me create the terminal and run again and you can see I'm getting a caption. It says a man walking a dog. Uh, wa walking a dog on a leash on a street. So that is the caption that Azure portal feels is suitable. OK, but. Uh, I told you that there are many captions that are generated and uh, uh, Azure portal shows you one. What about the other captions that Azure portal thought of? Those other uh, captions are called dense captions that Azure portal has thought of. OK, so let me view all those dense captions over here. So let me view it for you. I'll say dense captions. And uh, there are multiple dense captions, right? So I'll have to use a for loop for the same. So let me go ahead. Let me use a caption. Sorry, let me get the dense captions. I mean, so I'll just go ahead and get the dense captions. And once I get it, I want to print it to the user. OK, here we go. And now you will see that uh, apart from having the best caption, it also shows all the dense captions as well. So for example, this is one caption. OK, you can see the confidence level. It was 0 0.82. That means 82 percent confident. Then there is another caption that Azure thought of, but Azure was only confident uh, about it. Uh, the confidence level of say, of it was 0 0.69, which means 69 percent. So Azure was only confident about it uh, around 69 percent. OK, like that there is another caption over here, a yellow car on the street, but Azure was only confident about it 
around 78 percent okay but the caption with the best confidence was this one at the top its confidence level was 0.82 that's why it got printed earlier but over here you are getting lot of information uh, let me give you two things that are needed over here so one is the actual caption and second is confidence level right so i'll just go ahead and get the same and that confidence level i'll multiply by 100 so that you get idea about it in terms of percentage okay it says float yes of course it will be of the type float here what i'll do is let me make it more user friendly or i should say reader friendly so i will say uh whatever is the caption i want to print it and let me go ahead and let me mention the confidence of it as well in this scenario i'll just go ahead and do the same so i'm just making it more reader friendly over here let me make sure that this value is of the type float and let me plug in some dynamic values over here okay here we go fine and now let's go ahead let's view the result and you can see we are able to see the dense captions and the confidence Uh, in those captions, okay. So Azure thinks of many captions out of which whatever is the best one. Uh, if you want the best one, you can get the best caption as well. If you want to view all the captions that Azure has thought of, you can get that as well. Okay, fine. So uh, caption analyzing is one. Dense caption analyzing is one. What about objects? If you want to analyze objects, then what to do? So let me go ahead and let me show that to you. So I'll go ahead show you that analyzing objects. Okay, so what I will do is if at all a object is detected on that object, I will try to uh, draw a rectangle sort of thing. Okay, so let me go ahead and do it. So I'll say image dot open. I will open that image file. which is inside images folder and the name of that file is street.jpg so i'll try to open it up and after opening it up i'll try to get i will try to draw on that uh, image okay so all the objects that are detected in that image over those objects i'll try to draw a rectangle and for that i will need the help of this pl uh, uh, you know pyplot module that i have imported fine So let me go ahead. Write the code. I'll just go ahead, complete writing the code, and then we'll go ahead. Okay. While plotting that image, I don't want axis because it will look very bad, right? If I have x and y axis. So I'll say off. Fine, and let me actually draw over that image. So I'll actually draw over that image over here. Okay. After performing drawing, uh, let me mention the color. So I'll say color will be something like cyan color. Okay, which is like lightish blue. 
that's how i describe it by the way so over here let me mention the color you can mention any color and there are multiple objects that it will detect so uh, what i will do is for all those multiple objects i will you know draw this box over those objects so let me use a for loop i'll say for a detected object in result dot objects so when we did that analysis earlier we got a result so from that result you are getting information about those objects that were detected and on each object what we'll be doing is we'll be drawing a box so let's go ahead let's do it first let me store the dimensions of that bounding box uh i'll just go ahead store the dimensions okay and over here let me just go ahead complete writing the code i wouldn't uh, explain you about uh, how dimensions are written over here okay that will be explained to you later ahead in this series for now this is just the overview i'll just go ahead and show you how this so service works basically fine so let me just go ahead and draw the box so i'll need to pass um, my starting coordinate of the rectangle okay so let me pass my starting coordinate so over here I'll just pass starting coordinate and ending coordinate of the rectangle so let me pass the ending coordinate okay so this is my bounding box over here and uh, let me draw the rectangle accordingly with respect to these coordinates that i have mentioned so i'll just go ahead mention the code for the same here it is let me mention some other details and now i am fine and we can also annotate on it for example if i want to mention the uh, object name all of those things we can annotate annotate so let me do that over here so you can get a full fleshed idea of how it works let me just go ahead complete writing the code uh remember guys that the basic requirement for this webinar is that you need to have a understanding of python programming language so that this code makes sense to you if you do not have understanding of it no worries at least the uh you know coding flow will make sense but if you want to understand the syntax better it's important that you have basic understanding of python programming language fine and now that i have drawn boxes over those objects let me go ahead and let me show it i'll just show that annotated image and in fact instead of showing let me put it in a different file only na so whatever uh, drawing i have done on that image that uh, drawing i want to save it in a new jpg file let me go ahead and do it and here we go i will say results are saved in this output file okay let's go ahead let's run the code and let's see what happens 
Okay, it seems there is some uh, spelling mistake. Let's correct it. And now hopefully it will work. Let's see. Okay, it says it has analyzed the objects and returns results are stored in this new file called objects.jpg. So let's see. So this was a street.jpg file. Let's see whether have we detected objects on it. So let me open this new file that we have created objects.jpg. And you can see we have detected objects, right? So we have put a bounding box on that object. We have also annotated the name of that object that is detected. Okay. So these things we have done. So here we have detected objects. We can also go ahead and detect people as well. So if you want to detect people, same code you will use, almost the same code. Okay, let me show you that code. Just few changes we'll need to do. So first I'll put a heading over here saying that I'm analyzing people. Okay, uh, rest all things should remain the same. Mm, I don't think so over here. There are any other changes to be done. Oh, uh, image, image over here. Mm -hmm. Okay, one second in this scenario. Okay, fine. So I've put a heading. Oh, heading is one thing that I've changed. Second thing that I will need to change is the key from which I will obtain people related information. So for object related information, I use that key called objects. For people related information, I'll use this key called people. Okay, rest of the things will remain the same over here. No change. Uh, no change over here. Fine. I think I'm done. Although I believe your annotation will not be required for people, right? Uh, how, how will I be able to know names of my people? So here, let me not annotate any text. Is this that over the people, uh, people's faces that are detected? I am drawing a rectangle. That's all. And I'll be seeing it, saving it in a new file called people.jpg. Fine, and here we go. And now you will see that apart from analyzing uh, objects, we'll also be analyzing people. So you can see we have analyzed objects as well as people. So you can see in the cars also there were some people, on the street there were some people. Those people have been, you know, analyzed. Okay. Now remember guys that it will do some false analysis also. Okay. Uh, sometimes this model might detect something that it might say that this is a person, but it is not actually a person. So that false analysis might also happen. Okay. But day by day, this uh, pre-built model is improving. But still, if you are not satisfied with the pre-built mod model's performance, you can go ahead and on Azure, you have capability to create your own custom model as well. OK, but in this webinar, uh, we just wanted to have an overview of how you can use Azure for your AI needs. OK, and up till now we have got introduced to. Four AI services category. First was speech services category. Second was uh, language services category. Third was document intelligence services category. Fourth was vision services category. In speech services category, we try to translate speech from English language to um, French, Spanish or Hindi language. Then in language services category, we did two things. We tried to analyze text and we also tried to translate text. In document intelligence services category, we tried to analyze PDF document. And in vision services category, we are trying to uh, do two things. First, we try to analyze images. Now we'll also try to analyze videos. So if you want to analyze a video, how to do it? Let's go ahead and let's understand the same over here. OK, up till now, if you have any doubts, please let me know. Let me. View the chat over here. If there are any doubts, please let me know. So just one lab is remaining and uh, after that we will be able to complete it. Uh, comp uh, we'll be able to end today's session. 
uh, one student is asking, can we label that as well after annotating? That tag object. Ah, yes, it is saved in a variable, now, so you can use it for future usage. I'll be sending code uh, to all of you so that you can try it yourself as well. OK, but yes, you can do those things because it's saved in a variable. So that tag that you you are asking about the tag now that if we can uh, store the tag and use it for future reference, you can. So those annotations that we have done, obviously you can store. OK. So fine. Uh, if there are any other doubts, you can let me know. For now, what I'll do is uh, I'll move on to our last exercise of today, which is to analyze video on the Azure platform. So in order to do it, what, what we have to do is we have to go to this uh, video analyzer portal called, uh, so let me type it out. It's called www uh, video indexer dot AI. OK, I'll say enter through my mm, Microsoft account. OK, fine. And after I've done this, let me do one thing. Let me delete this previous video that I worked with. Fine, so you'll see this kind of portal, guys. OK, now what you want to do is first you want to upload a video that you want to analyze. So let me. So you can either browse uh, from your local laptop or uh, a computer or you can enter URL of the same. I have a URL of a video. OK, and what I will do is I'll just go ahead and mention the URL. Over here, so let me go ahead. Let me add it. And. Let me upload. It is uploaded. It will take some time to upload. You can see the completion is 5%. We'll just wait. And once it is uploaded by default, I mean automatically it will do all the analysis. For example, from that video, uh, we would have. Uh, it will generate captions automatically. It will be able to detect people in those videos. OK, lots of things it will be able to do. I have uh, tried to open that link. Let's see. It is taking time. OK, but anyways, you'll we'll be able to see it on this portal anyways. OK, for some reason this MP4 file is not opening, but no issues. We'll be able to open it over here. So wherever you have uploaded that image, whether it is GitHub, Google Drive, wherever, you just need link of that image and you can upload it over here or you can also upload it from a local laptop. OK, it does not matter. Fine, and once it's uploaded, automatically all the insights will be obtained. You don't need to do anything. No need of writing code. No need of doing anything. We'll just wait for a few minutes. It is still at 84%. Soon it will be done. And we'll be able to see insights. So whether it is your own personal video or any video you want, you can get insights from it. The uploading does take some time because it is getting all the insights in one go. OK, but the time is worth it. You will be able to see a lot of analysis done on that video. Just wait. The uploading is almost at 84%. Soon it should be done. And we should have the insight soon. Till then, guys, if you have any doubts, please let me know. And also, meanwhile, I'll try to revise what we have done up till now. So guys, today our goal of the entire webinar uh, was. 
to understand what is AI and how you can use Azure for your AI needs. OK, so we try to understand what is AI. We understood that AI is nothing but a set of tools which is used for two purposes. First is to get. Inferences from the data. Second is to get predictions from data. Then in order to do this, in order to get inferences and predictions from data, we need to use certain AI tools. There are two main AI tools that you can use. First is the tool of machine learning. Second is the tool of deep learning. So what is machine learning? So machine learning is like teaching a computer how to recognize patterns and uh, make decisions based on past examples. So for example, imagine teaching a child to differentiate between cats and dogs by showing them lots of pictures of each. So the child would then learn the general characteristics of cats and dogs and it would then use this knowledge to identify new pictures. On the other hand, if I talk about this second tool of AI, which is deep learning, so it is a much more advanced tool of AI as compared to machine learning. It's more advanced and your we use something called neural networks, which are designed to mimic the way how human brains work. So it's like, uh, not only it's like not only teaching the child how to differentiate between cats and dogs, but also helping them understand the subtle differences like the breed of the dog or the color of the cat without specifically teaching them about these details. So guys, deep learning systems can learn from massive amount of data and it can pick up uh, on uh, complex patterns that might not be immediately obvious. So in summary, machine learning is about teaching computers to learn from data, while deep learning is a more advanced version of this, which is capable of learning from large amounts of data and also picking up on more complex patterns. OK, uh, after that, uh, we try to understand how you can use AI cloud platform for your uh, sorry, how you can use Azure cloud platform for your AI needs. So Azure offers many AI related services. Those services can be categorized into four categories. First is speech services category, second language services category, third document intelligence services category, fourth version services category. With respect to speech services category, we performed one lab wherein we try to translate speech from one language to another. With respect to language services category, we perform two labs wherein we try to analyze text and translate text. With respect to document intelligence services category, we try to perform one lab wherein we try to analyze PDF document. And with respect to vision services category, we are trying to perform two labs. First, analyzing images, second, analyzing video. Uh, we are in this last lab of today, which is analyzing video. I hope the uploading is done. It is done. And let me play the video for you. And you can see it has obtained lots of insights. So it has identified the people in those videos. OK, so the people in those videos it has identified. So uh, at, at which places uh, people are occurring, for example, here, then you can see all these highlighted uh, uh, you can see in the timeline uh, there are some highlighted uh, places where you can observe people. OK, so you can see that then what are the different objects in that video? So automatically it has identified objects. You can see on the right hand side, OK, whether it is a chair, car, cell phone, traffic light, clock, remote, computer, mouse, OK, laptop, cup. So all of those objects it has identified. Then the keywords in that video, labels in that video, emotions. So what is this video all about? OK, so it is sensing 5.78% anger, 4.03% joy, joy and all of those things. So it can. Uh, so these are some limited insights. If you want more, you can view more insights over here. For example, if you want to see sentiments, you can see that. OK, if you want to unselect people keywords, you can do all of that. For example, you just want to see sentiments. You can click on sentiments. It will just show you the sentiments. If you want to see scenes. So what are the different scenes in that video? It will show you that then emotions. OK, then um, people. Then. Uh, uh, your translate, for example, captions, right? So. Uh, you can get that as well over here. OK, so here you can see the captions. 
So if you select it, you will be able to see the captions. If you answer like you won't be able to see. What are the different speakers? How many different speakers we have who are narrating the story? So your from your speaker one is starting. Then from eight second onward, sorry, from eleven second onwards, speaker two is starting. Then again from twenty nine second onwards, speaker one is speaking. Okay, and so on. So like this, you can get lot of analysis automatically, guys. You don't have to do anything. Okay. So all of this analysis you can do. Today was just the introduction section so that you understand uh, how you can use Azure for your AI needs and you gain interest in the Azure platform. In the upcoming webinars of this series, we'll dive more into uh, how you can use each of these services. Okay, uh, and today uh, we just went through the code as it is in the upcoming webinars of this series. We'll dive into each code, the reason behind each uh, line of code, and so on. Fine. Today, I hope uh, the goal of the webinar was accomplished. Our goal was to introduce you to the field of AI and how you can use Azure for your AI needs. Um, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. And uh, uh, if you, uh, as far as the resources of this uh, lecture are concerned, we will send those materials to you so these coding files and everything will be sent to you okay so don't worry about that fine so that's it from my side guys i hope this webinar was informative for you if you have any doubts whatsoever you can put it in the chat meanwhile i will hand it over to chaitali so chaitali you can take over uh, i am done for today if you want to announce something to the students you can Uh, yes, yes, Smith. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to express my gratitude for uh, such an enlightening and thoughtful session. I hope each one of uh, the participant has uh, like be able to get uh, this web able to find this webinar informative. Also, some of you were asking about the learning achievement batch activation, so I will be sharing the steps again. So make sure you get it done today itself. I'm sharing the redemption process again with you all. Just a minute, let me share my screen. Uh, yeah, guys, as I have mentioned earlier, we have shared AI 900. Uh, that is Azure AI Fundamental and AI 102 Designing and Implementing Azure AI Solution. The batches are for both the courses. So you just have to follow certain steps. If you are yet to get the batch activated, please follow the steps and get the batch activated as the series uh, will uh, have the content uh, or the concepts regarding this batches itself the, uh, the regarding this certifications only. So make sure you get this batch activated. So for that you have to first go on Microsoft Learn as you can see on the screen. It has been mentioned that you have to go on Microsoft Learn to create your profile. Click on that link, the first link which has been mentioned. After that, you will get the, uh, you know, you will get the uh, the pop up like this that you have to sign in. You have to create to, uh, you have to create the profile first. If you don't have the profile created, after that, uh, you have to click. On the URLs which has been shared, the AI 900 batch URL. One by one, you have to uh, click on both the URLs and get the batch activated. Once you uh, click the URL, you will get a pop up uh, to redeem the uh, batch. After that, you uh, the batch will reflect on your profile like this. Under the achievements, the batch will reflect somewhat like this. The completion. Uh, the completion of the date will be mentioned. Also, you can share this batch on your LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook profile. Like this, you will get a pop up. Once you click on the share, you will get a pop up where you can share this batch on all of your profiles. 
also to print uh, you can click on this print button which is beside the uh, share icon you can see the print icon as well beside the share icon you just have to click on that and you will get the completion of the course so make sure you get your batch activated and if you are feeling if you are getting any issue regarding the batch redemption do let me know in the chat box i will keep the steps on for you all so make sure you follow the steps and get the batch activated and uh, also it will be great if you will share your thoughts uh, on the session uh, we have shared the feedback form uh, your feedback will will play a crucial uh, role in helping us to understand your perspective and to make the necessary improvement so make sure you submit the feedback form as well the link for the feedback form has been mentioned in the chat box to submit the feedback please follow the link which has been mentioned in the chat window or the chat box guys your response will be kept confidential we'll assure that so make sure you submit the feedback uh, it will help us to work towards the delivering even more impactful and effectively so make sure you submit the feedback please Yes, guys. Please make sure you submit the feedback form before dropping up the webinar. Please make sure you submit the feedback form. Also, if you have any uh, doubt regarding the batch redemption, do let me know in the chat box.
few of you are asking for the dis uh, discounted exam voucher guys if you need the details regarding it i have shared the details uh, of the email id on which you can ask your questions related to that my support team is there to help you out with it also we have shared the whatsapp number on which you can connect so make sure you get that number and email id and do write us over there so we can help you with that too Uh, guys, if you are done with the redemption of the badge and you have submitted the feedback form, you all can drop off. Those who have submitted the feedback form and have activated the badge, you can drop off. We'll meet tomorrow at the same time. Okay, so some of you are asking what is the batch name for AI 102. Uh, guys, you will see the batch name as designing and implementing a Microsoft Azure AI solution. Uh, you can check with the date also as you have activated the batch today. So you will get the batch uh, date as 19th December. Below the batch, the date has been mentioned. So check with the date as well. So you will get your batch. I hope all of you have submitted the feedback form. Uh, thank you so much for attending the webinar. We'll meet you tomorrow at the same time. We have a second webinar of the Gen AI that is exploring generative AI, exploring advanced generative techniques and their application. So see you in that webinar tomorrow at same time. Thank you so much, guys.